Greetings, people folk. I'm Jim, I use he, him pronouns, and today we are playing Don't Rest Your Head, a game about nightmares and super-powered insomniacs. Uh, we're going to go around and introduce everyone and ask them to tell us who they're playing and maybe just a little tagline about who their character is, and uh, then we're going to get a little deeper into everything. So I think I am going to start with uh, going around. I'll start with Will. Will, hello! Hello! Uh, I'm Will. I'm playing Tyler Higgins, a semi-autobiographical account of an overstressed programmer uh, who's been on a death march for months and uh, has finally gotten to the point where he's not sleeping at all. Excellent. And uh, Natalie, hello! Hello! Um, I'm Natalie, uh, also Dark Eyed Bark, uh, but in this game I'm playing Caitlin Clements, uh, and she's kind of your standard uh, all A-plus student. Um, uh, close to finishing up her college degree in uh, philosophy uh, and she's been gobbling the, the no-dose pills and, until she found that she couldn't actually sleep anymore even if she wanted to and um, at first it was great but now it's become a problem and she's growing frazzled and mm. having a yes. Excellent. Um, just so you know, I'm getting a little bit of static um, uh, on, from, from you so I don't know if there's Everything's all right over there, but I just wanted to let you know, should there be like a setting or some such thing. Um, but let us move now on to Ozzy. Hey. Hello, uh, I'm Ozzy. Uh, first time here on this channel. Uh, and I'll be playing uh, Brent Williams, who is a uh, um, concept artist for um, a games company. Excellent, excellent. Oh, cool, actually. There's a, uh, there are possible connections in here we may need to exploit. Um, and I'm going to ask some character questions in a little bit. But first, um, this can be a, a deep psychological horror game, so uh, just so you folks will know, uh, we're going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. Uh, if we hit something that's crossing a line for you, any of the players can type an X into the Zoom video chat, and we'll back up and do something else. Uh, if something happens that you're okay having in the game, but you don't want a graphic description of it, uh, type an N into the Zoom chat and we'll fade to black on it or put it behind a veil. Uh, so it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Uh, finally, uh, then as soon as I have lost all, and we're going to, we also have the O card available, basically. <laughs> he says as he tries desperately to read the, I'm reading copy, everyone. I'm reading copy because if I try to talk by myself, terrible things happen. No. Uh, finally, if you're in the midst of intense role playing and you think uh, we might be worried you're really upset, uh, out of character, um, then you can put an O in the chat to let us know you're okay and we're good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is also put an O with a question mark after it when we describe something and the, then we think, oh, maybe that was a little too much. Let me just say, uh, oh, question mark, everything okay? And then everyone else can respond to that and just let us know if you're still doing okay. Um, now, the way I've set up this session, some of the character questions are going to be answered in play. But before we begin, uh, is there anything anyone uh, wanted me to go over uh, that's on the character sheet? I don't know, they didn't get to in pre chat or anything. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Let me see. I'm very much the type who who plays things by ear. And, ah, uh, excellent. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and uh, place our ears to the uh, uh, our ears to the wall and see what we hear. Um, so, uh, basically. Um, as this go, I had a couple of character questions um, that I wanted to uh, make uh, make sure of. Yes, we have things. Excellent. Um, uh, Any time that you, um, I, I may at, some, at times call for a roll. That's what some folks are going to be seeing in the little window above my head here. Um, and uh, usually when you roll, you're going to be rolling your discipline and any exhaustion you have. Uh, because this is a one-shot, I'm starting all the PCs off with two exhaustion. Um, and uh, if it were a longer form thing, then you'd start at zero and progress. Um, you may also, you also have the option to add as many dice of madness as you like. Well, up to six dice of madness um, to uh, anything that you do. Um, Exhaustion, of course, just represents, you know, you, these, these people have all been up for a very long time, 
And uh, so the exhaustion is just sort of a meter of these uh, abilities you've gained through just sort of pushing through that to the point that you're now superhumanly good at something. Um, uh, but a, 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 thing that, a thing that most, that is still humanly possible. Um, your madness talent, on the other hand, is something that is supernatural, definitely in nature. And that stems, of course, from the uh, madness resulting from having been up for so long um, and becoming awake. And uh, since you're awake, then you can see the nightmares even, uh, even during the day, even when you're not asleep. But of course, they can also see you and they can, they can find you. So that is kind of what we're going to be looking at here. A um, couple of character things I just wanted to address before we dive into the starting scenario. Um, so... Uh, both Brent and Tyler uh, have something to do with uh, with a similar industry, um, so I think it is. A, I'll leave it up to you, but it's entirely possible that you might to, you might know each other, possibly have worked with each other um, in some fashion or another, um, and so that might be a, that might be a connection there if you choose to do that. Um, and uh, Caitlin, what is it you you were studying at school? He's studying philosophy. Philosophy. Ah, excellent. <laughs> good, good. Are there any particular philosophers of which you are a fan? Off the top of your head. Ooh, I should have uh, looked into that. Yeah, no worries. Um, she'd, uh, she'd probably really like... Um... Oh, goodness. I actually did well in philosophy classes in college, but you can't tell right now. Oh, no worries. Um, I, can, I can barely remember anything either. I just... <laughs> Uh, I just figured if there was something there to be mined, I ought to mine it. But uh, there, but we can always if you if if something comes to you, feel free. But it doesn't need sure. to be. It can be more general studies of philosophy. It doesn't have to be. Uh, you, you don't have to be like Hegelian or anything specific <laughs> like that. So um, we should be good. All right. Let me just see here. Um, first off, oh, one other thing that I should mention both uh, to you folks playing and to anyone who might be watching. Um, please, uh, I've been trying to deal with uh, audio issues, so uh, let me know if uh, if there there's trouble with like either the sound balance or the music, or you can hear, or you have trouble hearing me. Can everyone hear me okay? Because uh, I'm seeing through Zoom chat that we might have some audio issues. Um, okay, so I can hear you just fine. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I I think uh, I think a little earlier. It's when when uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that earlier we were, we were having, uh, during that, there was like buzzing in, uh, on, on Natalie's end, and then she was a little sure. uh, soft, but it, yeah, she's better now, so I think we're fine. All right. Technical crises averted. Uh, <laughs> let, us dive, let us dive in here. Um, so let's see. This is going to begin. Um, let's see. Dee, 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 dee. This is going to begin in a uh, in a group therapy session uh, in a community center in what we uh, what we call the city slumbering um, the uh, whatever city it is that uh, you're currently in and uh, it's not necessarily a uh, shall we say uh, a supremely important thing to identify what si what real life city it might be but uh, we can do that if we get to it. Um, but uh, the uh, you're essentially in uh, it said. But one thing I did want to ask is the city that you're in. Are you in more of a? Is it more of an urban environment, or is it more? Um, are you are you in more of a suburban area? Where is this community center located? Uh, do you think what type of what type of neighborhood? It's probably more urban, I think. Yeah, kind of inner city. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's probably then I'm guessing not the squeaky clean suburbs. Hmm? Not the squeaky clean suburbs. Yes. And more, 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 more the not quite the rough part of town, but yeah, not exactly the uh, the, the 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 nice part either. Yes. On the on the not quite to the outskirts of Cityopolis, um, basically, or whatever city it is. Um, but 
I like that, Cityopolis. Uh, but no. Um, yeah, basically, uh, so we've got... Um, and then Jim remembers which random deck he didn't bring to bring bring to the fore, and that is the random deck of NPCs. But that's all right, um, because I have a name generator in front of me, and I'm going to use that. And so, let's see. Three moderately creative people. Well, <laughs> Offload yeah, that stuff. That's fair. That's true. Yes, I should probably ask. Uh, does anyone? Uh, so, does anyone know your, uh, the, the person who's not, uh, perhaps not a licensed therapist, but, uh, uh, who knows the, uh, the person leading this group best? Oh, it's freaking Todd. <laughs> freaking Todd. Does very little. Todd does very little and probably just is, does a lot of passing of the buck, I'm guessing. Well, um, he, he's putting his community college, uh, associates degree in psychology to work <laughs> excellent good good excellent so so yeah you've got freaking Todd Todd again is uh, been just essentially leading this uh, leading the group blindly and in, in, in the loosest of possible terms leading the group um, <laughs> as uh, just essentially trying to uh, get folks to uh, to talk and has, generally speaking, has not been terribly successful, but seems to mean well. Uh, don't know if it's really more about uh, proving that, uh, that, that he can actually do this or if it's uh, more about actually helping people, but it's probably, you know... Uh, Maybe a little of column A, a little of column B. But um, so Todd uh, basically push, um, is uh, sort of as, as folks are uh, sort of in there, they've been very quiet. And, uh, he says, and so he, he takes off his, his glasses that he might not actually need. Uh, and, uh, and he's taking, he takes them and he's uh, wiping them with his handkerchief. And uh, he's like, okay, um, I think we should go ahead then and uh, hmm, I think we should go ahead and talk about these things. And he's kind of glancing around. What does this, uh, what uh, kind of room are you in? I'm, I'm picturing it's sort of a community center like gymnasium yeah. um, type thing. Um, does, that, does that sound about right? Yeah, but very bare, um, sort of a circle of, of rickety chairs, um, you know, paper cups of coffee, that sort of thing. Yeah. The um, best architecture poured concrete can buy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there is a, uh, yeah, behind Todd is a, uh, is, is there's um, uh, sort of an open area with a bunch of uh, folding chairs that haven't been used up. There are very few people in this uh in this session right now, actually. Um, uh, there are like two other people, uh, one of whom has fallen asleep. Um, <laughs> hey! And, <laughs> achievement unlocked! <laughs> yes! <laughs> the lucky bastard. Um, and uh, then uh, behind Todd is a, uh, behind those folding chairs, there's a sort of a stage. Um, that uh, it has a big, uh, big kind of embroider, sort of a very pretty embroidered uh, red curtain um, on on the proscenium. That's uh, that seems to be you know better lit than the uh, than anything else in this room. There's like the 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 the, uh, the fluorescent lighting in here sucks. It keeps blinking on and off. But uh, somehow that uh, somehow somebody left one of. Some tech left the spotlight on, um, and so it's you know kind of distracting um, the three of you a little bit. Um, it is not distracting uh, the uh, it is not distracting the the uh, the fellow that's sleeping right now. Um, but uh, you have um, uh, Ayana there, who is a uh, looks like she's about. Uh, probably, she's probably in her uh, in her twenties, um, early twenties, 
she is also a uh, she is also a student. Um, so, uh, um, and uh, and Caitlin, you've seen her around campus. Um, and uh, she's uh, she's. Uh, uh, thus far, undeclared. Well, actually, no. She's in her twenties, so she's probably actually already, f to a certain extent, figured out what she wants to do. I want to say she's probably doing biology. Um, and uh, she she also can't sleep for probably similar reasons you're guessing, but uh, also is very shy and does not like to talk. You know this about her as well. Um, so, so Todd just sort of, uh, so freaking Todd is looking around, he's like, okay, um, well, I guess I'm, I guess I just need to start calling on folks. Um, let's see, uh, unless anyone wants to volunteer, no, uh, Tyler, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us why uh, you're having trouble sleeping. I'm not having trouble sleeping. I'm not sleeping on purpose. I can sleep anytime I want to. And he holds up his his uh, Starbucks Grande cup, which he snuck in because I'm assuming they don't serve coffee. At no, no, not at Sunday. this meeting, no. <laughs> so Tyler's got a friend at Starbucks that'll give him a Grande <laughs> cup, but it's espresso. <laughs> And it's and it's actually it's pretty bitter, but it helps wash the amphetamine tabs down. So it, it's all good. So so Tyler's you know he's just he's he's kind of he's jangly and kind of angry. He's I I, I don't want to be here. I could sleep if I wanted to, but you don't get work done when you're asleep. And and I I got stuff I got to get done. And and they told me I had to come here because I'm i've just been awake too long and and they don't believe that i'm making progress and i i just don't i don't want to be here and he sits down and you know crosses his arms trump style you know very insecure uh very powerless hmm. well that's uh that's understandable it can be it can be very tough at first but you know we all need to sleep that's uh it's kind of important um and he just sort of is looks down where he's He's still polishing his glasses, even though he's been doing that for the, like the last two minutes straight. Um, and uh, he's uh, just sort of is sort of looking at them, and kind of very fascinated by them for a moment, and then he puts them back down. He's like, um, "Oh, for God's sake, right. God, they're clean." <laughs> just put them on your face. <laughs> now, hostility isn't going to get us anywhere right now. But but that's okay. It's okay. No, it's good to it's good to express what you need to. Um, maybe uh, maybe Caitlin can tell us uh, a little bit about herself. Um, I'm I'm Caitlin Clements. I'm 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 trying to get my degree in philosophy. And I'm, can we turn off the light on the stage? It's. Um, and. Uh, Todd just sort of looks around and he uh, says, "What? I I'm sorry. Is there a, is there a light back there? Yeah. I, is there a light on? I thought there I thought there was. Is and just sort of looking around. You see, uh, Ayana just sort of looks over and she's she's nodding. She she can see that she can see that it's lit. Um. Apparently, Todd needs his glasses after all. Yeah. Yeah. That's a light, Todd." Todd is Todd puts his glasses back on, and uh, he turns around and he's like, and then he you know he's taken aback for a second. He's like, hmm, yeah, I'll see if they can. Yeah, okay. No, I see what you're talking about now. Um, hang on. Um, let me. Uh... Oh, uh, and he turns. He looks over again at. Uh, he, he just uh, leans over to, uh, uh, to to Ayana. He says, "Oh, um, could you go uh, talk to Mr. Bradley out there and just see if they can they can turn off the switchboard real quick while we're going around here?" And she's like, uh, she nods. She stands up. And she she heads uh, she heads out uh, for a moment, um, and. Uh, and he uh, he looks back up. 
Okay, well, uh, we'll, you know, she's, we'll get that taken care of. Um, but, uh, okay, how, uh, but, uh, what's, uh, do you know, do you know when it started? Uh, um, last, last week, I think, is when I noticed I really couldn't, couldn't sleep anymore, and I, at first it was good, but then I was just so tired and I still couldn't sleep and I couldn't focus and I need, I need to write. I need to write more and, and, and study. I had the, uh, the dissertation. I just, I need to sleep. Oh, no, certainly. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand. That's, that's something we could all certainly need, but it, it's, it's easy to, to think that you can trade sleep for productivity. But you, it's no, you can't. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. Tyler uh, snorts loudly. Now, <laughs> now, there's no need to. Uh, it's different for everybody, but there's no need to. Uh, to, to you know, like this, this, to you know, go down anyone's problems. It's this is this is a. This is a serious. This can be a, a serious issue, but it's good that we're kind of talking about this. Um, Brent, do you have anything to share about you know, what's what's been happening to you? Um, well, yeah, um, I can't say. It's. I mean, I've had problems with nightmares for a long time, but it's uh, for the last couple of weeks. Maybe it's been so bad that I can't just can't sleep at all. Yeah, you know, it's not that I wake up with a nightmare, but it's just I worry so much. <clears throat> I worry so much about all kinds of things that I just you know can't quiet down in any way and. Uh, no drugs any doctor has uh, tried on me have helped so far. And uh, so, um, I don't know, and so maybe there's a, there's, a, there's a trick I can pick up here. Well, I'm certain there uh, is. Now, a... Counting sheep and that sort of thing, that of, yeah, this didn't help. So he's taken his glasses off again and he's polishing them again. And he just sort of is putting them on and he's, he, he looks around at everyone. He seems to, he's like, and he's, as he's looking at all of you, he sort of blinks, he takes them off again, and puts them on. They're still here, haven't changed. Right, yes, that's good to know. Um, and uh, just sort of looking around. Um, and uh, let me uh, pull up real quick. Um, let's see. Um, I, I, I guess, uh, I guess Samson isn't going to contribute anything right now. He seems to have solved his problem. Uh, let me just look and see if I can, uh, get the, get that light off. Hang on. Um, and uh, you know, there's something. Something seems to be bothering, uh, uh, bothering Todd right now. We're not sure exactly what it is, as he's looking around. He seems bewildered. Um, he stands up. Do we, do we hear anything? Uh, not in particular. It's uh, mostly just uh, the, the the sounds one would normally hear. Uh, actually, like traffic on the outside and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, there's traffic outside. Um, there's someone's playing. Um, someone's playing music uh, somewhere in the building. You think there's like uh, there's um, there's some classical music drifting in from somewhere. Um, and uh, so Todd stands up and he walks toward the stage um, because he's trying to get a fix on where the spotlight is. You can tell that much as where he's heads up to the stage and he cranes his neck back and he's looking up and he's like takes off his glasses again, puts them back on, and uh, looks down at everyone. And he's like, you know, doesn't seem to want to look at anybody right now. He gets up onto the stage and he stops. Oh God, it's therapeutic karaoke. <laughs> and. He sort of, he goes over as he's looking up 
and uh, he's actually uh, he's looking around. He's like, can can anyone see where that spotlight is? Uh, and he's turning and uh, right there. Well, so you turn to look at where the light should be coming from, and there is no spotlight there. Does he cast a shadow? Well, the funny thing is, um, yeah, Todd is uh, Todd is casting a shadow, and you see him actually. He opens the curtain and and just sort of pokes his head through, just for a moment. And he's like, "Do you hear that?" And he steps through. Wait, uh, was this a tapestry hanging on the wall? No, this was the curtain on the stage. Oh, oh, oh. All right, I had completely incorrectly visualized that. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It's a gym, but there's a stage at one end, um, like for for performances or what have you. Um, gotcha. And kind of in the way one would have high school gym, but this is more in sort of a community center auditorium type thing. And uh, so we walked up onto the stage, looking for where the spotlight was coming from. Couldn't see it, and then thought he heard something. Walked through the curtain. Um, and, uh, yeah, as you folks are looking around, you can see the light on the curtain, but there doesn't seem to be anything projecting it, and that's kind of odd. Is there a control panel somewhere? There is a, uh, yeah, there's, there's a, a lighting panel, um, over toward, uh, over near the door. Um... <sighs> You see, oh, uh, have a look there. And uh, as you're heading over, uh, Ayana walks back in and uh, just is sort of looking around. Um, they, they, they said there's, there's nothing, there's no power coming to the, to, to, to the spotlights in here. But what? you see the light. Yeah. What's going on? She starts walking toward the stage. <sighs> And then look at the lighting panel. If there's a, um, a switch uh, labeled stage, uh, there, yeah, there are some. Uh, there, there are a couple of uh, of lights. Uh, or, or there, there's there are a few different switches, like number one, number two, number three. I'll just try a few. Okay. Um, nothing happens. Hmm. Um, it's not these. She's as she, and. Uh, Ayanna's kind of heading back and she's looking around and she says, none of those lights are on. Um, and you know, looking around, you, you also do, do notice that there are, there are like three spotlights up there, um, but none of them are turned on. Gremlins. And she heads over to, she actually starts walking to a, a side door. She says, uh, I think I can get into the booth from here. I think they have one, and there, there there's might be a switch or something. <laughs> and she goes through the door. What's the weather like at the moment? Is there a storm or anything? Right now, um, it's I would say about uh, it's just coming up on um. Is it like twelve thirty or so in the afternoon? It's uh, uh, it's a gray day there. It's about uh, let's say in the mid uh, mid fifties. Um, there's a high pressure system coming over the hills that'll be descending on us uh, later in the evening. It's uh, as we'll be going down into the thirties, and tomorrow there will be a warm front coming in, and we'll be up into the early into the low sixties. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> I think in each of the, I got asked the weather last time, and I just I think I just need to have a weather report ready for these things. <laughs> no, no, it's it's uh, it's fair to Midland right now, but uh, uh, overcast. So not really, um, uh, but an electrical storm or something that could you now um, play havoc with the electricity or something. Mm. No, um, okay. Hmm. You know, All right. So how old's the building? Gonna... Tyler's going to jump to his feet and say, oh, I guess we're done. And he's going to start kind of stuffing stuff into his 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 man bag. Excellent. And uh, getting ready to leave. 
So Todd's still behind this this curtain. Do we hear anything from the stage? As you're um, listening, um, it does sound as though there's... You hear something back there. You hear something. Um, it sounds like there's something shifting around. There, There's someone shifting around back there, probably. You're right there, Todd. Todd does not Todd, respond. I need you to sign this form so I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he hasn't signed anything yet. No, no. Yeah. Plus, that will keep Tyler from I mean, his. I mean, his. Yeah, that's 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 fair. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, his his clipboard is sitting there on the on his chair. Uh, but uh, there's there's no. Uh... <coughs> no, he. Fake his signature. <laughs> <laughs> You can do that if you so desire. I'm already in enough trouble as it is. <laughs> I just need this guy to sign this stupid piece of paper. Todd! Todd! All right, I'm going to uh, go find him. Okay. Um, so uh, where are you headed? Just up to the well, I'm going uh, to look over to the other two. You guys need signatures, too. No point in sitting uh, around. Yeah, and sure. Um, let's head to the snake. back. Okay. So I'll grab all my stuff and uh, head to the stage. All right. I'll nervously follow. She doesn't want to go, but she doesn't want to be alone either. So. All right. So as you're uh, as you're getting closer to the stage, um, the uh, the classical music you were hearing has gotten a little bit louder, um, as though it's coming from some source behind the stage. Um, it's, uh, sounds kind of like, uh, sort of a dissonant thing, uh, kind of like, uh, Mahler or, um, Shostakovich, uh. Does it sound like someone's playing, or is it a recording? Uh. So is it just, like, one piano, or is it an actual, yeah. um, orchestral recording? Uh. It sounds more like, yeah, it sounds more like someone is, yeah, someone is playing a, uh, someone is playing a piano. Hmm. Which it, I, I, you don't know if there's enough room for a piano back there, but it didn't, you wouldn't have thought that given how small the stage is. Oh, well, let's have a look. As you uh, head up onto the stage, there is a brief moment during which you see what seems to be a shadow come into the light. As, uh, as like a long, thin, spindly hand with sharp fingernails that's like re real really close to the uh, to the light whatever the li the non-visible light source is and it seems to reach forward and the curtain pulls back a little bit what the hell what what so there's a hand pulling the curtain and beyond you can hear it's it's very and I did not uh, I did not uh, schedule any piano music unfortunately but uh, <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, you uh, you look and uh, let's try this whatever this is. As you're uh, as you're there, there's it's very dim back there, but. You can still hear these, these sort of this this ding, 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 sort of piano music playing, and uh, Get the, um, you hear the what penoid. sounds like a, like a clock chiming once. Hmm. I get the pen light on my key ring, one of those small uh, mag lights, mm -hmm. and I shine it 
behind the stage, behind the, uh, the curtain. All right. So, as you kind of uh, look in there, there's a hallway back there. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's a hallway that leads down. It's it's like inside a would be like inside a a house or an office building. Um, with no light fixtures, it just goes back for, I want to say, maybe like 50 feet. And there is there is light at the far end, and the piano music is drifting from that far end. Uh, has this all this been here? This place is... This seems bigger on the inside. Have uh, well, I don't know. Have any of you been behind the stage before? Bob, you Bob, you have a, a rough idea how big the building is. This building should not be able to accommodate that hallway. Mm-hmm. I, I don't it's think we need to figure. Better. I can I can take the heat for missing for missing a session. I don't I don't think I need a <laughs> a signature so much. Any anybody else wanna? There is. Uh, I'm probably going to get fired if I don't. There is. If I don't a, get this, so. A, uh, there's also a. You hear knocking. Yeah, but we'll cover for you, Tyler. The, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We, we, because Tyler was is worried that he, he might he needs to get back to work. So was, I said, uh, we we'll cover for you. So if you want the head back, hat back. Just so you'll know, there is a uh, there is now a banging on the uh, on the the sort of. Uh, the, the, the double doors at the front of the auditorium. It's like thud, thud, thud. And it's very loud. This is I'm going from towards, this away is from, from the sound, towards the, uh, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so Brent is heading that way. Uh, Tyler, what are you doing? I'm going along too. Okay, and Caitlin, what are you doing? Reluctantly tagging along and still kind of mumbling about leaving. It'll, and, and it'll be okay. All right. Because the, the banging is coming from the entrance, isn't it? Yeah, uh, from the uh, the entrance to the auditorium. Yeah. So that would be the way out. So you're going away from the, 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 the knocking and the banging. All right. So you start heading down the hallway. As uh, you do the curtain, you, you hear for a moment, it sounds almost like... Uh, and you're not sure where it's coming from, this sort of... Oh, no. As the curtain closes. As the curtain closes, just uh, anyone, whoever's uh, uh, in the rear, uh, can just sort of see the... You get a, just the tiniest glimpse of the auditorium door bursting open and something that looks like... Okay, you only saw it for a split second, but it looked kind of like um, someone dressed in a kind of a weird policeman's uniform, and their face was kind of silvery. Um, but as soon as you would expect to hear them, their steps echoing forward, um, but it starts to muffle a bit. Um, you can still kind of hear hear their steps echoing forward, but once the curtain drops, then it's it's much more muffled for some reason. Um, let's 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 okay, let's go faster. Yeah, cops are here. Even less reason to stay. All right. I hope it's a police officer. So you uh, proceed forward uh, down this hallway. Um, the piano music continues. As, uh, as you do this um, and uh, as you, co you come out um, into what looks like a sort of a loft suite um, apartment type deal basically um, it's uh, everything is the walls are white um, there is a and the light was coming from this room there are uh, candelabra set up and a lot of basically a lot of uh, a lot of candles around um, and uh, 
It looks like there are multiple monitors up on walls, multiple TV monitors. Um, not grouped in the supervillain uh, uh, way, but uh, grouped more just sort of in the I want to turn this loft apartment into a sports bar way. Um, and outside these very big windows, what you can see is there's a... Uh, you can't see it well yet, you're not up there but yet, but there is uh, a city skyline and uh, it's night out there. Which is very strange because it just turned, uh, if anyone look glancing at their watch or, or timepiece, whatever they have, it just turned 12.30 um, <laughs> in the afternoon. But it's nighttime out there. There are stars. Um, also in this room, uh, there, there, I should explain, there is a, uh, an area toward a front that uh, looks sort of like more sort of kitchen nook apartment type stuff, loft apartment type stuff. Uh, in between here and there is a wide open space and there's a piano. Um, there is also other furniture, but uh, the piano is the important thing right now to consider. Um, and uh, it is a grand piano and the, uh, the lid is raised as it is playing um, this strange dissonant tune, so you cannot actually see who's playing it because the lid's currently obscuring your view. Um, the, uh, the, the far end of the piano is pointing at you, the non-key end. Um, and uh, that is currently where you are. Hello? The playing slows down for a moment. If, if that were possible, given the how slow it's playing now. Um, and then starts up again slowly. What the hell? Did we drift off? What time do you guys have? Mm, 12.30. That's what, what, that's what my watch says, but... Look it's at that. out. Oh my, if I lost... Oh. If I lost 12 hours of work, they're going to kill me. What, what, what is going on here? Class. I had three classes yeah. after the meeting. Uh, 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 I turn around. Is the door we came through still there? So, that's the odd thing. Well, it, it's kind of odd. You do turn around, and the hallway is... The hallway is there. Uh... And it does, and it does go back into darkness. Um, there are a couple of pictures up you didn't see on your way in. And uh, I go, yeah, go ahead. to the window. All right. And look if I recognize the area. If we are where we are supposed to be. Okay. Uh, Short answer, no. Um, <laughs> longer answer, there is a city in front of you. It is not a city you recognize. Mm -hmm. It. The, the buildings what? look kind of wrong, not just because they're from the wrong city, but because they are from the wrong era. Uh, you have some... You're in what looks like a... Maybe well, actually, you can't see this from the outside, so you're not completely sure. But uh, this looks like a fairly modern building from what you've seen so far. Um, and there are other modern buildings, like a couple of uh, sort of uh, not quite skyscrapers, but tall buildings um, out there that seem to have the standard sort of glass paneling and lights. Uh, and then there are buildings that look more kind of Victorian. Um, out there and building sort of that would be in between tenements um, a lot of uh, frames with twisted metal and then also the longer you look at these buildings the more you realize that some of them are kind of at angles that they shouldn't be <laughs> what and, is yeah twisted and then above all of it one thing you do see very prominently is a clock tower and on it, the funny thing about it, 
Uh, it's, it's a narrow clock tower, big clock face, and it has 13 numbers around it. And it is currently showing 12, uh, about like 12.35 or so. Um, and uh, the big hand is moving toward the 13 slowly. And after th the 13 is a 1? Yes. Right. Does it appear to be uh, moving at the same rate? And like, does, 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 do the seconds seem to match up? Um, well, yeah, you look at it. Uh, I mean, there's not a second hand on it, but uh, as far as you can tell, um, it's it looks like if you it's sort of stand enough. for a minute and you sort of look, it's like, okay, my watch says 1236. That also, you think, yeah, that's 1236, probably. Sure. And, uh, well, go ahead. I'm just going. I don't think I want to know. Being very confused. Thirteen o'clock. My mistress it's bids just... you welcome. And the piano playing has stopped. Uh, what? Hello. Who said that? The voice uh, seems to be coming from the front of the uh, from wherever. The, the front of the piano is. Odd. All right, Tyler will kind of come walk around. You come around, and there is. So, this is kind of, uh, well. It looks for a moment like there's someone sitting at the piano, and there's a little bit of playing starts up again idly. Um, as you come around, you see that uh, it looks like there's someone wearing a, like a sort of old-fashioned tuxedo, because that's the part you see first. You see like an elbow move up, as apparently someone's hand is perhaps moving up. But then you realize you don't see hands. And uh, actually, I know you do. You see, you see gloved hands. Um, but uh, there's a suit, but there's no person inside. Um, I mean, it's shaped like there's a person inside, and there's a cape and everything. Uh, but nobody in it. Just, just a suit playing the piano. Like the Invisible Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, there is like. The longer you stare at it, it's like there might be a sort of a shadowed image, like a silhouette of a head, maybe. But the lighting in here is weird anyway. What? Well, what? Well, hello? Hello. Who are you? Well, where are we? Mm -hmm. What's going on? That's not the right question. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Todd? Todd, Todd. Uh, the, the sort of and the, the, this, this gloved hand sort of comes up uh, right about here where a person's chin would be, um, as though contemplating. And uh, the uh, it's, it's sort of as those thinking. And, uh, says, um, you, uh, is that Todd? It says pointing to the, pointing to a picture on the wall. Is that Todd? Is it? It is a picture of Todd. Um, it is a picture of Todd, uh, very sort of close up, sort of his face. And just behind his glass, he's got his hands holding his glasses and his eyes look very bloodshot, and he looks like it looks like he's in deep, maddened realization. And uh, his eyes seem to be glowing a little bit in the picture. What? Well, what happened to him? Go home now. Can I? Can I go home? Uh, you can go wherever you like. It's, uh... It's you've still got about what twenty minutes. Yeah, you can go wherever you like. Uh, but I don't uh, think I need that release signed after want... all. But my 
My mistress thinks that you have talents, and she can make it quite nice for you here if you would like to stay. Well, if... Who? Sorry? Who, who, who are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And where, where are we? You know... Uh, well... Says, um... We are, uh, uh, we're in that place that, uh, where we stay when we're not in people's dreams. You can almost hear the smile. You can't see it, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I am, the, I do, I do beg your pardon. So standing up, um, and the bench pushes back and the cape flaps. Uh, they call me the magician. So mm -hmm. I'm asleep. <laughs> no, no. I need, I need if you were asleep, things. this whole thing would be much easier for us. But uh, no, we've decided that uh, you might be willing to negotiate before, well, uh, before they come. My mistress. Who? Oh. <laughs> oh, the uh, office, officer talks people. They are rather, uh, they are rather dogmatic about uh, the newly awakened folk. How, how that might are they... be where uh, that might be where your friend Todd is, possibly. Uh, uh, someone ran through here a little bit ago. Uh, might have been, might have been Todd, but of course. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we there aren't pictures that. of us on the wall, are there? He's got a lot to worry about. Hmm? There aren't pictures of us on the wall. Um, do you ask this, or are you looking around? No, no, I'm, I'm asking you as a GM if I can see pictures of us okay. on the wall. No, I, I was just saying, I was just, just want to know if you were asking the magician or not. No, you know, so as no. you're looking around... Yeah, I'm looking uh, around. You see... Uh, actually, sort of, as you're sort of... I, I presume you're moving around looking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, those pictures in the hallway that you didn't see before, mm -hmm. um, they're kind of faded. They're very faded, so it's hard to see who they're of. But one of them looks actually, the more you look at it, the more it looks like Tyler. Um, Tyler, there's a photo of you here. What the hell? What kind of weird, creepy stalker den of mutants is this? <laughs> well, the uh, the voice says, "Well, well, I don't know. It's uh, well, the winning kind, one hopes. But uh, then, I mean, if you're not interested in doing business, uh, then I uh, well, you have more to worry about, I'm afraid. And you start to hear from the hallway. You hear." footsteps of mul multiple footsteps as though they're uh, are these officers what grabbed yes. me in the library the uh, let me uh, look really quick at the thing that was provided unto me because I did look at it before but I just want to make sure that I um, actually no um, you don't think well no no um, you don't think so um, it's uh, it sounds different. These you can hear coming. Okay. Um, but uh, one thing I will mention is I'll uh, as the the magician sort of stands and is walks over to the door, and there's a top hat that he pulls down from uh, from a hat rack, and puts atop a a non-existent head. Um, and it is now floating there. Um, he says, I would make your mind up fast if I were you. Uh, the, uh, the officers are not terribly forgiving. But uh, it is up to you, of course. Uh, you have until uh, the clock strikes 13. If you wish to avail yourself of my mistress's services, then... Uh, Show us where to go. Ah, 
we are... Or at least me. I don't know if the others want to come along. <laughs> well, should you, uh, should you decide you wish to, uh, you wish to and uh, are still able to, uh, just, uh, meet us at the... Uh, there, there's a... There's a, sh there's a bit of a little uh, utility... Uh, little utility building at the base of the clock tower. That's where my mistress is currently uh, is currently waiting, and uh, she but would to be delighted out. to see uh, she would be delighted to see all of you again. Uh, she's had such a, an interesting history with well, at least one or two of you. Take care, and uh, as he's getting ready to turn around, you see a couple of a couple of blue eyes light up inside the head and then uh, he uh, opens the door and leaves not the door we came through no right um, I'll, I'll go after him alright you're heading that way because um, I don't like the footsteps that are coming there are footsteps <laughs> coming uh, you can start to see the uh uh, Tyler and Caitlin, you can start to see outlines of what look like people-shaped outlines coming forward from the darkness. They're still a bit of a ways away. Um, what are you doing? I'm I'm following out the door. Okay, and Tyler? I'm uh, Tyler's going to actually stand there kind of confused for a moment because this is way outside of his wheelhouse. And then just kind of, okay, and run after the, the two of them. Tyler, you're there long enough to be able to catch a better glimpse of these uh, these cops that are coming out of the uh, <coughs> uh, out of the darkness, and uh, what you see are as they have sort of silver. Uh, it's like they're mannequins in some ways, silver mannequins in uh, uh, sort of turn of the century Bobby uniforms, um, with clocks for eyes. And uh, and they're come they they as they are they are they are coming forward they are coming forward in sort of a stilted mechanical fashion, um, and uh, presumably then you turn and uh, continue after the rest. Yeah, a little faster now. Okay. <laughs> uh, you uh, you're heading uh, you're heading out the door. You hear behind you halt in the name of the law. And. Uh, you race up out. Pace. You're in a. Mm -hmm. uh, you are in a wide, mar a wide marbled hallway. Um, there are other several other uh, apartment doors. Uh, there is a. There, there is what looks like an elevator at the end of the hallway. Uh, we were up several stories, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, head for the elevator. Okay. Brent is heading for the elevator. Are the rest of you also doing that? Do I still see the uh, walking suit? Um, you do not. The walking suit is not with you now. Is the elevator fall. moving? Uh, well, you can go and press the button. and. Yep. Uh, but, uh, but there's no indicator when you think. Yeah, it's, uh, right now it's showing that it's in the lobby. Okay. And you are on the 10th floor. Oh, God. <laughs> And you press the button and you see ding, 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 ding. It's coming up. It's coming up. Um, presumably, uh, Tyler closes the door behind him. Um, yes, and if there's any sort of lock mechanism. Uh, well, there's a, uh, there is a there is a lock on the outside that would require a key to be inserted. Um, uh, but uh, sadly, you do not appear to have, one, uh, have a key at the moment. Um, the, uh, once it gets up to about, I will say when the elevator gets up to about the seventh floor is probably about when the, uh, the cops are going to get to the door. Um, stairs. so wh wh where are you folks and what are you doing? I'm looking frantically for stairs. Yes. Uh, all right. Dash around looking for stairs. Um, I think I'm actually going to call for a roll for this. Um, sure. just to, uh, just to see how this goes. So, um, <clears throat> the way this will work is, uh, 
Uh, you are using at least your uh, discipline and your exhaustion dice. Please let me know if you decide you're using your exhaustion talent. You may use up to six madness dice if you so choose. You're going to be rolling against a pain of... You're going to be rolling against a, a two pain dice. Um, okay. I realized actually last time I did this stream that I rolled the dice ahead of time, but then I, uh, I looked back at the, because of a mistake I, I made in interpreting some of the examples I saw in there. Actually, um, I just tell you how many pain dice you're up against, and then you get to decide how many, uh, if you want to use madness dice, and then you roll everything. Sure. Um, and so you go, uh, basically uh, in the character sheets, you would roll each, you know, you press each of those buttons essentially that you're sure. uh, ready to roll on. And if I'm, uh, at this point in time, if I'm rolling discipline and exhaustion, that would be five dice. That would be five dice, yes. So want, you you have oh. the option to increase your exhaustion by one before you roll, if you want to have a total of six dice, or you have the option of using one to six madness dice as well. Uh, I'm just gonna try uh, straight up, I guess. Okay. Did they both go? Okay, so you've got your Discipline and your Exhaustion rolled, and I presume you're not rolling any Madness dice? That is correct. Okay, so you're probably going to succeed since you already got three successes and I'm only rolling two Pain dice, but let's see, uh, let's see what we get. Okay, um, mm -hmm. I got two successes, you got three. Um, and right now it looks as though Discipline dominates. Uh, so that means things stay under control for you. Um, then, and uh, you have the option, if you wish, to uh, decrease your exhaustion by one, if you want. Um, but uh, you do find, uh, tucked away in the corner, um, actually across from the, uh, the door you just came out of, uh, a, uh, a, a narrower door that uh, has a different looking handle on it. You open it and that leads into a narrow stairwell. Uh, stair I found I found stairs. How and far up is the elevator? Um, it is about to hit uh, floor seven. <sighs> yeah, I'm so hitting for the a, stairs. Yeah, you can have a moment to either leap to the stairs or wait for you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Brent goes for the stairs. Caitlin goes for the stairs, presumably. Um, and Tyler, what are you doing? Uh, Tyler's not super thrilled about the stairs because that's a lot of uh, leg work. Um, is there any chance the elevator's going to get here in time? Um, well, if you uh, want to wait and see, uh, you may certainly do so. <laughs> so so my exhaustion <laughs> talent is like, uh, it's an, an analytical thing. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, can um, I, so actually, can I make a roll, increase exhaustion, and... Yeah, you don't actually have to roll if, uh, since actually you just reminded me you have that um, for, for this since a roll has already been made to find the stairs. Um, you, uh, you calculate that actually they're gonna get they're gonna get to, to the door when the elevator hits seventh for the seventh floor. Um, then it's got three more floors, so you're gonna have to do something with at least one of them to throw them off if you want to use the elevator. Um, so you are going to at least... The, the, they'll probably be up to you at the time the elevator door is open. Uh, fighting cops or running downstairs. Yeah. Two bad choices. Uh, Tyler will go for the stairs. All right. You heave for the stairs. And uh, the uh, once again, the door closes behind you. Um, slowly, as such stairwell doors tend to. Um, cursed hydraulics. Uh, tumbling, tumbling down the... Well, not tumbling, but you're racing, racing <laughs> down the stairs. Um, and uh, you hear the uh, you hear these, these footsteps echoing behind you. Um, I'm actually going to call, since Brent, I think, is probably went first. Am I right in that? Down the stairs? Um, or did Caitlin I, go down the stairs first? Probably gone first, actually. Yep, that's what I thought. Did Caitlin go first? Because... I mean, I thought when Caitlin said I found yeah, stairs. So Caitlin I found the stairs. I kind of presume. Down. Um, okay, so. So I'm second. I think what I will have then. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. I think actually, yeah, I think I'm going to have, uh, since Tyler's in the back, I'm going to have him make this roll. Um, the, the, this is the running to escape the, uh, the clockwork police roll. Um, <laughs> or, or escape uh, notice from them. Um, this is going to be versus a pain of four. And um, yeah, this is just essentially a... Uh, I, I think I'm going to have Tyler lead on it, but uh, the two of you may assist if you wish. Um, if you want to, then that means you would just do a only roll discipline and you would contribute your successes to that. Um, however, whatever the result of the roll is, is going to affect... Uh, is going to affect anyone who contributes to it. Okay. Is this one of those stairwells where there's uh, like a center empty space, like you could look over the side and see all the way to the bottom? Yes. Uh, well, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty narrow, but uh, yeah, you can. Okay. So so Tyler is, is for some reason, is just inordinately uh, scared at the idea of getting uh, arrested. You know, he's not sure if his employers have, have like, set the cops on him or not. Um, so Tyler's going to leap over the the, uh, the handrail and go straight down the middle. Ah, excellent. Are, uh, are you using your madness talent? <laughs> I am using my madness dice. So excellent. How, okay. How many so, dice do I need to, like, feather uh, fall down the to, bottom? To have a controlled fall down just the center, um, I think, is really that's... Uh, it's pretty narrow, so I would say you'd need at least two madness dice uh, in, to include Dumb in your roll. Dark. And so you're still rolling your discipline and exhaustion. Again, you have the option to increase your exhaustion if you want. Um, and at least two madness dice. And you're going to be rolling against a pain... Uh, again, a pain of four, I believe I said, to get, get away from the cops. Um, and again, you folks may contribute if you wish. <laughs> Oh, go, go, go. It's just, just shouting encouragement. Yeah. So, as you're running down the stairs, you yeah. see your body just fall. Uh, <laughs> so I do not at this... Uh, you said four dice, so it's going to be five, six, seven. Yeah, I'll increase my exhaustion by one. Okay, so, you, so you're rolling your, your three, three discipline, you're rolling your three exhaustion, and then you're rolling, uh, I think I said two madness dice. Two madness. All right, and discipline. Mm-hmm. Exhaustion. Nice. And madness. Okay. And oh, I fall down the stairs like a boss. Awesome. No one falls down the stairs better than you. Um, <laughs> Uh, I got uh, I got two successes on pain, which is you know nowhere near enough to, to be able to catch uh, to catch you. Um, oh, so and it looks like discipline dominates. Um, it does. Let me see if we've got fours. I've got fours. You've got fours, but you've also got a three. So yes, discipline. In fact, <laughs> discipline dominates again. So you may uh, you may take off an exhaustion if you want. Uh, I'm going to do that. So when I was a kid, I had these dreams that I could fly. And uh, as I get really tired, the, 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 the memory of it being a dream sort of blends into it just being a memory. So it's almost like this, this childlike reflex of, hey, I can fly, so just jump. And then at the bottom is, oh my God, what happened? Nice. Um, so you folks... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you can hear the, the, the thudding of uh, mechanical legs behind you way up there, but uh, Tyler soars down to the bottom um, and uh, gets there first. Uh, with uh, Caitlin and Brent closely behind, there is a big metal door that you can just push the bar on and you burst out uh, into, uh, into what looks like a, a, a busy city street. Um, it's, uh, you know, essentially you've got uh, a lot of, a uh, lot of cars racing back and forth. Uh, it looks like kind of a business district. Um, and they're racing back and forth on, uh, you've got, uh, Model T's and, uh, Volkswagen vans and, uh, and Audis and all manner. Just sort of, sort of racing back and forth along this strangely uh, 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 cobblestone street, so they're probably not that, uh, uh, that, that great on the tires, but uh, uh, all manner of uh, 
folks walking back and forth, looking like uh, they're 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 looking up, and you can still see the clock tower from here. A lot of folks looking up, uh, hustling back and forth. Most of them look like people in business suits, uh, but some of them look like they're not people. Uh, some of them are uh, sort of impossibly tall, uh, uh, with uh, sort of there's an impossibly tall person sort of lumbering around with hooks for hands. Uh, and just sort of runs over to a building and climbs up the side of it. Uh, you see all manner of uh, sort of a, a little gaggle of, uh, of penguins sort of passes by you. Um, all of them apparently, re one of them reading a newspaper and all of them just sort of ch chittering to each other. Um, there are, uh, there are a, uh, a, a number of, uh, on the, across the street from you, uh, there are, uh, it was apparently just some uh, uh, sort of a group of pigs dressed in look uh, in in kind of uh, tuxedo-like finery, who appear to be coming out of a uh, who appear to be coming out of uh, a music hall of some kind, and they're just sort of you know chatting back and forth about something. A um, lot of lot of conflicting things going on. But but fuck off me. Anyway, drop down the stairway. All right, so you're heading in the direction of the clock tower. Um, yes, so I'm you're... following. Okay, um, you're at uh... the actual what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. what? Yeah. So, Did you guys? So you dash out and you lose ah. yourselves, and you, you have lo you've uh, lost the uh, the police for for now in the crowd. So uh, um, you see them kind of uh, burst out of the door, and then they look around and they turn the other way and they run the other way thinking that they might have seen you. I don't even... Don, no. Don, Don Boulder, right? Maybe the, the lady at the doctor can tell us what's, what's going on. All right. John, hey, you've John, got a... Sorry, go ahead. John Boulder, I wrote... He wrote about um, nihilism as, as the real world of over simulations of which the real world is composed. Do you think that's what's going on? She's just following along. She's talking because she's nervous. <laughs> she's trying to make the way through town. Can, can you text me the name of that uh, philosopher again, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to blend in the space as, as, uh, as good as possible. Okay. So, but uh, it doesn't quite work with uh, yeah, you know, it's modern players. It's weird because it, it shouldn't, but no one seems to pay you too much of a mind okay. uh, as you're uh, going back and forth. It's like they're kind of used to uh, to, to seeing um, uh, folks uh, all, of all different stripes, basically, uh, uh, racing back and forth through this city. Um... And uh, you have about, you've, it's about 15 to 13 um, right. as you are, are heading closer to the clock tower. You're, you're not too far. You'll probably be there within uh, about like five minutes uh, walking. Um, there are a lot of different, uh, there are a lot of different uh, uh, types of buildings it's like it's really weird and occasionally you look up and the building sometimes the buildings sway a little bit which is also kind of unnerving um and uh but eventually uh you make your way to the uh this massive sort of town square you see uh just you're coming out under a large it's not exactly a banner but it's a uh, it's an archway that uh, goes over completely over the street that you're coming out of uh, there's like a bridge that you pass under and uh, on the uh, on either side of this bridge are uh, are there, there's this big plaque like thing that sort of chiseled into the side of the bridge is uh, are the words district 13. Um, and so this is a, apparently the entrance to, dis to District 13. Um, 
and uh, you see the clock tower, you see uh, several different uh, types of buildings kind of grouped around in this square. It's kind of, um, how would I put this? Actually, yeah, it's, uh, you're, you're in the square, so the buildings are uh, all, all around you, and the clock tower is in the middle in its own sort of thing, and there's sort of a roundabout that goes around it, and these around which there are cars that are circling seemingly endlessly around this thing. As you're moving your way around looking for this utility building, um, it's like you see the same car go around like 15 times, uh, this thing. So there apparently are some folks who are here driving just to drive, maybe. Um, it is, it is an odd thing. At about 10 to 13, uh, you find a, uh, you find a building, um, that... Uh, has this wooden sign over it, so it's sort of uh, hanging out like on a like on a shingle, um, that says uh, Shadow Utilities. I guess this is it. Um, Most likely. I'm just waiting to wake up. Is is there a, a knob or a handle? There is. It's uh, there's there's a uh, there's a knocker on the on on the door. It's actually a uh, there's a wood paneled door, um, and uh, the face of the knocker um, looks kind of like a. I want to say it, it looks like a, a frog. Um, mm -hmm. Toc, toc, toc. Okay. Ribbit, so, ribbit, ribbit. Yes, you knock on the <laughs> you knock on the ribbiting door, um, and uh, there's this. You hear this sort of the sound like a lock disengaging, an electric lock disengaging, and the door clicks open. Push the door in. Okay. You step in, and. Uh, as you're uh, as you're heading in, there's a uh, there's a hallway um, that opens up into a a larger room, and there's um, sort of a, a front office looking thing. It's very dingy and dark in here. Um, there's a desk. There's a couple of filing cabinets. Um, there's a glass window in a uh, middle that doesn't look out to the well there, there's a window that looks out to the front of to the street you just came from but it's frosted so you can't actually mm -hmm. see through it um, but uh, behind the desk there's a sort of a central wall with an internal window in it um, that looks like it's actually seen very better days it's very dusty completely covered with dust and cracked all over um, and there's a door sitting ajar um, that's uh, in that in that wall as well. And as the last of you comes through, presumably, um, the door you've just come in through closes behind you, and you hear an electric lock sort of engage again. And from the back, you hear. Uh, do come in. I've been expecting you. Hello. Um, e e yes, we're here. Um, come to the back. Slowly move towards the back. Move towards the back. There is a... Uh, as you sort of come to the door and you look through... This room is even darker, if that's possible. There were, like, gas lamps in the uh, the room you were just in. In this room, the only light is coming from a bunch of electronics that are packed sort of all around the walls. Um, there are several monitors in here as well. Uh, the back of which is there is a, a bank of them that is set up more in the supervillain fashion. Um... But they're all manner of gadgets of various from various eras, as far as you can tell, collected on shelves, 
and uh, sort of metal wireframe shelves around this place, or just tall sort of server-looking things, computer servers, other things. Um, all manner of electronics and uh, other equipment, technical equipment, utility equipment. Uh, a lot of pipes in here, valves that can be turned. It's a fairly, there's a fairly decent amount of room. It's not like a tightly packed room, aside from the amount of the, the, the stuff being packed closely together, I should say. At the center of all this, um, a series of cables runs um, to, a, to a chair. Uh, not, well, not to a chair, but I guess, yeah, to a chair that's uh, sort of a big sort of um, big chair rounded top that's uh, near a uh, near another desk with a couple of monitors on it and uh, that are that are glowing in sort of odd sort of bluish greenish static and the chair was sort of half facing you it swivels toward you and inside is seated Something that's hard to make out at first, because it looks like it's just two glowing blue eyes seated in shadow. It rises, flowing up, as though it's perhaps like made of cloth or something, or the outline, the silhouette is perhaps, but not quite. And you see that you see two long spindly arms with long fingers with sharp nails at the end. You see, uh, you see in profile this, uh, sort of, it looks like a, it looks like actually a very wizened old, uh, old lady with a long nose, and, uh, in, in profile, and it turns to you again, you see those glowing eyes that, um, at least two of you recognize, and, uh, she says, and it is about time you found me. I have been trying to get in touch with you for some time. Now, let us see if there is any way that we can make use of you. Perhaps you will be good enough to survive. And I think that is where we're going to take a break. Um, as we're at about the halfway point, uh, so we're going to break for about like five, ten minutes, um, and uh, as I as I figure out uh, uh, further ways out of this corner that I've just I've just painted myself into, uh, and um, <laughs> we will. Uh, uh, but uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, be doing that, and uh, then we will come back. Uh, so we will see you folks shortly. Take care. <laughs>
we have returned. Our, uh, our insomniacs are, uh, there in, at Shadow Utilities at, uh, the time is 10 to 13, uh, in the Mad City just outside the clock tower. And, uh, we're going to see what happens now as this creature has just stood up and has turned to you and said, uh, and uh, at least as I said, two of you recognize her. Um, she tells you that she has uh, been uh, trying to contact you for some time and that she wants to see... Uh, she, she, she'll, she's looking forward to getting, uh, getting to see your survival skills. And, uh, so that's, that's what happens. So she stands there. So what are you doing? Backing away slowly. <laughs> you want us to do what? Well then, I think uh, that there is much we have to consider. You have tried to fight me for so long, she says, uh, looking, you think, more specifically at Brent. Um, but we can help one another. You might want to consider stopping the struggle. It would be so much easier. More I don't know him. <laughs> I, think, I think perhaps a mistake has been made. I, Sorry, Brent, you seem like a nice guy, but... Oh. Apparently, family issues or something. I. Mm. I. Um. Uh. um no. I don't think so. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the. Uh... <clears throat> Perhaps you. Remember it more. Uh, I was not here so much as I was here. And when uh, she says that, Brent, you hear that in your head. Uh, get, get out of my head. <laughs> she uh, she starts speaking uh, audibly again uh, for, for folks to hear. You have uh, more, in the more immediate sense, a choice to make. And I'm very interested to see what you will do. Ah, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ta Mr. Higgins, you, uh, you, s you say you do not know me, but uh, I know you very well. She gestures, and uh, one of the monitors changes and one of your projects appears on it. No! Uh, what, uh, what does this project look like that she's showing you, that she's showing everyone? So we're trying to make a, a cutting edge, state of the art, first person shooter type thing with uh, some enhanced graphics. And you know, it really is supposed to be revolutionary, but it keeps not getting done, so, not getting finished. So you see that and uh, in it is, uh, Basically, there's there's a lot of uh, there, there's actually a lot more more sort of death and destruction in it, a lot of more blood and gore than you would typically do in a sample you're showing someone, um, and it's you see this sort of tentacled creature that comes up to the screen and just sort of is sort of just looking out. That's one of the and it's something you programmed. You did program that, uh, but uh, it's not supposed to do that. Um, <laughs> And, uh, Where did you get that? Have you been talking to one of the designers? <laughs> and so Tyler transitions from, you know, from fearful to just like indignant. <laughs> Where did you get that? We didn't release any of those. Ah, uh, well, sometimes uh, thoughts speak more so loud that one can hear them quite easily. Even in... Uh, uh, especially in the quietest places, uh, libraries and such, she says, turning and those blazing eyes looking uh, bo boring into Caitlin's soul uh, for a moment. Uh, but, 
but, uh, but, but you don't have. Uh, you must make a decision. As uh, here, I will tell you the facts of what uh, what is happening now, and uh, I will show you. She gestures, and on another screen, you see, uh, sort of goes to static, and um, you see Todd. Um, he's seated. Freaking Todd. Yeah, freaking Todd is sitting in a chair. Um, he is tied to the chair, um, and he's uh, tr he's struggling to no avail. And he looks like he's actually kind of bleeding a bit. Um, as, as someone has been uh, doing something to him. Um, he's, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, he's, um, yeah, it looks like he's in some kind of office somewhere. Um, and what he's actually, the thing is, he's, he's actually, um, in front of him, his hands are cuffed. They have handcuffs on. Actually, they look like shackles, really, more than anything else. Um, and the chair also appears to... You know, he also is, is he's, his legs appear to be shackled to it. Um, and... Uh, she's... And... Uh, this, this being says... Now... Oh. Yeah, this... This man is known to you, I believe. Mm hmm Well, he is perhaps soon going to talk to the, uh, the clockwork police, and then they will know more about you. Traitor? Perhaps, but you could go and... You could go and get him, you could go and stop him, if you wish. Of course. I'm assuming he's not doing this on. Hmm? Uh, on purpose. Well, I don't believe he's talked yet. But it's only a matter of time before they summon Officer Talk, and he usually gets the confessions he wants. Right, so they make him talk. So you have an option should you wish to pursue that, uh, and uh, of course, should you do that, I would consider it a a thing that would put you somewhat in my favor, as well, District Thirteen has grown over large of late. It needs someone to cut it down to size. Now, of course, you could. You have a few minutes. You could simply leave, if you wish. But, but I should point out that uh, I have this one. And she gestures another screen. Uh, opens up. Uh, opens up. It uh, goes to static. And then you see... Um, you see Ayana, um, who was uh, with you? Uh, who was with you in in the group therapy at the beginning? Um, and she is currently. It looks like. Um, on an, on a stage, a different stage. Um, in one of those, and she looks like she's uh, she's tied to. Uh, well, actually, no, she's not tied down to anything, really. Which, which, you know, she's in a... Let's see, which thing are we using Are we using here? Yes. Um, you see, she's actually... Um, yes, being secured inside this... Uh, she's lying on a table. Um, and uh, there are these sort of box facades that appear to be uh, coming up. You, you see her lying on the table, and then this box facade comes up on top of her. And it looks like the kind of thing where one uh, saws someone in half. <laughs> Well, if we have to choose between the two. I would say that uh, 
should you go after your friend Todd, that uh, I would uh, perhaps be lenient in, uh, or not lenient, I would perhaps show you lenience and show, have the magician show some restraint. What, what, what do you mean by that? Do you mean she'd be able to go back home? Well, she, well, he would, uh, perhaps look for another assistant for now, but uh, she might still be a bit of an understudy for the time being. Let's go, let's go help Todd. You guys are going to help me save Todd, right? Sure. Let's do that. Yeah, okay. Very well. I look forward to watching your progress. And, uh, Uh, do be careful, though, and you hear the clock striking outside um, as uh, it starts to, to bong very loudly. And she says, the clock has struck 13, so for the next hour, you are in this city and they will be able to see you, all of them. Do be careful. You sit back down in the chair. So where do we go? Where's Todd? Ah. So she uh, pulls up a, uh, what is he? Yeah. She gestures, and uh, out the, this uh, sort of draft board comes wheeling out. This uh, portable draft board on wheels comes wheeling out. On it is a... It would be a little generous to call it a map. Um, <laughs> it's uh, also very difficult to map the, the Mad City. Uh, so one might call it... Um, the crazed of siblings idea. of a madman. Yeah, kind of more in that direction. Yeah, uh, not not a not a great draft of things, but uh, yeah, you see, it's it's not in crayon though, at least. Um, <laughs> but uh, you see uh, a map of some streets in District Thirteen, and you see a uh, and uh, you see a uh, a precinct building. And that's uh, that's on. Um, it's not like right near here. This is like the center of things. Uh, you have the main precinct, which is the biggest building, and then there's a satellite precinct. Assuming I'm using the word precinct correctly, haha. Um, that's uh, a bit further off, and that's the one that has uh, that. Uh, 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 sort of an, an X draws itself onto it. And uh, she says, I believe he's there. That is where they are holding him before they transport him. Uh, I think that once once Tark questions him, uh, if there's anything left, he'll probably want to make use of that one's talents. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting that map into my memory. Ah, yes. Excellent. Can't you take a picture of it with my cell phone? Yeah, sure, you can do that. Um. Um, can I tell Can I tell the scale of the map? As in how far away that building would be from where we are now? So... It's a little well, tricky, there but landmarks. Um, yeah, you, you, there are landmarks. Um, you've got uh, you, you, the the um, so the the opera house slash theater that you had passed earlier is on this map, um, and uh, the main precinct, of course. There are some other landmarks. There is a uh, yeah. There, th it's actually this precinct is. Uh, apparently not far 
um, from a uh, on the map it's basically a large building with what looks like a, a several, like a big T um, on that, that it's uh, on the map is what it looks like um, and that's it looks kind of like a office building slash factory <laughs> good things that really don't go together <laughs> uh, can we see the building we come out of originally um yeah that one is yeah it looks like that's a um looks like a residential tower of some kind mm -hmm. and uh yeah, that one's also on the map. It's it's pretty close to the opera house. Right. Well, I guess we uh, have to have a look at the island and see how we get from there. Yeah, you've got basically um, how would I put this? Uh, sort of like um, if we were to use compass directions, <laughs> uh, then uh, you've got just to the east of you. Um, is where District 13 starts. A little further in is the main precinct. Um, a little bit north of that is uh, the Opera House and the, uh, the residential tower. And a little bit northeast of that is the uh, secondary precinct and the building with the big T on it. Well, I should find a way and um, avoid the big precinct because she said they can see us. Sounds sounds like a good a good plan. Um, getting there is our first problem, but I think a bigger one is is assaulting a police station. I I've never done anything like that. That just doesn't sound like a good idea. Do we really like Todd? I mean, he's Todd, but do we really want to leave him? Do we want to leave anybody here? And what about Ileana? My reasoning for going for Todd is that we should, you know, Try and find someone who can actually help us here. And uh, and you went for the lady. She seems to be it. Because I have no idea what to do here. Where we are, how we dig it, how how we get home, how. So we sort of need to go with the flow, I guess. Right. As you're talking, um, you notice the lights come up a little bit in this room, and the shadow creature is no longer in the room. And it is is there 13. anything... I mean, Sorry, go ahead. Is there anything in this room that could reasonably constitute a weapon? Just even like a short piece of pipe or something? Oh yeah, there are plenty of pipes around. Um, oh yeah, so I'm going to grab some you know, I have yeah. Tyler has no idea what he's doing, but like a short piece, maybe two two feet long piece okay. of pipe or something. Yeah. You grab one of those up. Um, if you wanted to hunt for anything like any more, I guess you would say um, less common uh, items uh, or more specifically actual weapon type things, then you would probably need to make a roll for that. But yeah, pipes, you're good. <laughs> Is there any rhyme or reason at all to any of this uh, computer stuff that's here? Uh, you know, just sort of at at, uh, at basic glance as you're looking it over, um, it seems like there might be a system, but it's one of those things where it's like it, it just just sort of glancing over it. It it looks very chaotic. Um, so if there is a system to it, it's probably one that you'd have to actually 
spend a moment looking and sort of figure out kind of what leads to what. The cables all lead to place to specific places, so there is something in that. Um, but you do not, you have not uh, discerned exactly what the pattern is. All right. I think just real quick before we before we leave, if we're going to go after Todd, um, uh, I would like to take a moment and see if I can just poke around on one of these computers and like get a log in or something. Okay. If um, that's all right. Sure. Well, for, uh, sure. He says this is the jam. Uh, so this is going to be versus. I didn't mean that roll. Oh uh, my god! Twenty six exhaustion. Yeah, That's scary. That's a lot of exhaustion the, dice. Yeah, the D um, went on. Twenty six. Um. So, I. Uh, so this is going to be versus. Let's see. This is versus. Um, a creature that I'm just going to start using her name. I know she hasn't said it yet, but uh, uh, the impressions will come eventually. Um. That uh, this is so. Let's see. The shadow crone is a. Uh, I'm I'm making her as a nightmare. She's probably about level mm, level eight or nine, um, but she's not here. Um, this is her computer. Um, so I would say this would be a pain of about. Mm, actually, this would be a pain of about four that you're going to be rolling against four pain dice. All right, I'm going to put a point of exhaustion in okay. so that I can trigger my exhaustion ability. All right. And... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, again, you, you can you can use your exhaustion ability regardless of whether you put exhaustion in or not, but if you have exhaustion, um, which you do, but uh, it just increases your chances. And then, uh, then you can tell me if you're doing a major or minor um, use of it. And, and major is you get more successes, but you get more exhaustion. Okay. So do you first of all well let's one thing at a time. First of all, do you want to increase your exhaustion prior to rolling? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Um and then uh do you want to do a major use of the talent or a minor use? Ma a minor use means that you will get at least the number of successes um that uh, you have exhaustion dice. Um and major use means you will get basically twice that in successes for certain. I'll just do minor. Okay. Um, so you'll still roll the, the dice, but uh, the, the number of exhaustion dice you have, you'll have at least that many successes. Okay. Do you want to roll madness or no? Okay. Oh, always, always go madness. Awesome. Okay. And I shall roll pain. Okay, so we have... Oh, uh, snap. <laughs> I have two successes. Um, you have two, three, four successes, but pain dominates. Pain dominates. So that means I get a coin of despair. And that further means that it is success at cost. So... Um, as you're, uh, you're rooting through this, trying to get a log in, you're basically trying to, what was your aim here, essentially, to try to gain control of her system or to try to get information from it? To try to get information. Okay. You know, what's going on and how can we find Todd and Ayana faster gotcha. um, than just that scribbled funky map that Brent has. Excellent. Okay. Um, all right, looking this over, rear port her, um, all right, so, you're going to come across, um, some things as this happens, um, as you are... Uh, it, when it when it asks, it, it's it's the login is really weird. Um, as because it's like it's asking. Uh, it's 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 
you, you find kind of a way, sort of a, uh, not exactly a back door, but you find a way around the, the login to get in. But in order for it to display, it asks you to enter, um, it, it says, please enter a memory. Um, okay. Is it like a text box? Yeah. All right. So my 14th birthday party when I got the mountain bike that I was really wanting. It was a good day. Okay. And uh, so you uh, you enter that and you you hit the uh, the 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 uh, done button basically. Um, as you do that, you have a slight feeling of loss and a feeling as though you've forgotten something, but you're not quite sure what it was. Um, and that memory of that party and getting that bike is no longer there. It's... And whatever that bike might have represented is now diminished for you. However, uh, as you, uh, it then pulls up um, information about uh, the Mad City and nightmares and the way it interacts with madness. It's, uh, it seems as though the Shadow Crone was hacking, hacking, uh, well, in a way, sort of trying to, trying to hack things, the, the, this, her, her environment to an extent, but she was mostly using it to monitor and figure out how to gain territory on, um, uh, on District 13. Um, she wants, uh, to create a, uh, she wants to create a shadow district, basically. Um, and, uh, it's uh, so she wants to grow from her her present state into that, and so in so doing, um, there uh, you see that she has dossiers on the three of you. Um, she has uh, information on uh, she has some information on Todd, um, and she has some information on Ayana, um, and including. Uh, information about their madness talents. Uh, she also has, says that there's also some musing that abilities can be used. Re really, the limit of one's ability is the imagination if one is willing to pay the price. Um, you get the sense that if one goes far enough, one can find oneself anywhere. You also get a sense, though, that uh, enough of that may uh, lead one towards becoming a thing like her. <laughs> Just from the way that her case files look. So a lot of oh, information, but you've got some. But you've got the. You 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 know where to look now. <laughs> all right. So I'll call Brent over. Hey, does this does any of this help with your map? Can you figure out where we're supposed to go? Does it? Yes. Don't look too much at the operating system. It's that's yeah. something <laughs> constructed in hell or Redmond, Washington, or, you know, <laughs> it's terrible. Six of one, half a dozen of another. Um, no, but uh, looking at it, you see that, uh, yeah, there are, there are files about um, locations, and then there is a file about uh, moving from place to place. Um, one method apparently involves going all out with one's madness. There apparently are ways to do that. Another method involves uh, secret doors. And Ooh. she does have a means, not necessarily of... Uh, uh, she's uh, postulated there are means of detecting those. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, she does note... Uh, where there where there are some that are known at least for now they do move so it's hard to say when they when they're going to open and close 
All that is, uh, all you do see is that one one thing definitive you see is that during thirteen o'clock, uh, no doors can open to the city slumbering. Oh. Um, however, uh, doors within the mad city still exist, portals, if you will, um, <laughs> that can get one from place to place, and. Apparent and and there are a couple of things that uh, she says you know signs for looking for these doors. Um, again, one can interact with it with the madness talent, or one if if one finds an appropriate use for it, or um, the there are certain uh, certain points at which say one might find a change that happens in a nightmare that would be reflected in the same way here. And that might possibly cause enough of a terrain change that a door would open. Okay. Mm. Is there any information on the precinct building? You see that, um, yeah, apparently there actually is a, uh, that from that, uh, actually, yeah, there, there apparently are pathways to it as far as you can tell um, you might actually be able to get there from the opera house strangely enough <laughs> like a secret tunnel yes or, or by the se sewers or something oh yeah there's an extensive sewer system also um, <laughs> there are uh, yeah and actually looking looking over at you there is a map you see of the sewer system um, some of it is not filled in. Some of it, there are parts that are outlined in red that it just says Wax King over it. And those look like more dangerous areas. Um, and, uh, then there are other parts that look like they will... Uh, it looks like he's not, uh, deeply into District 13, thankfully, apparently. Um, or under it. But, uh... Mm -hmm. It uh, it seems as though yeah the most of the the, the tunnels in District 13, um, possibly some are patrolled, uh, mm. but uh, yeah there's there are other outlying uh, yeah so, so yeah there is a there is a sewer tunnel that looks like goes directly from the uh, under the opera house to uh, to that precinct. Look at this. That might be a good way to get in there. Mm. Also, is, I'll have a look if I can find anything on uh, the building itself, as in how many people are there, um, maybe a blueprint of the building, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, I think you're, as you're, if you're digging for deeper, very specific info on that, Mm -hmm. um, via this, I think I'm going to call for a roll. Sure. Um, so uh, this will be against a pain of three. The system is already up, but this is information held by another faction. Um, and might be, you might be able to find only for a couple of particular reasons that uh, we shall get into in a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to be over... Um, it's going to be over, uh, yeah, over three pain, basically, is what you're right. going to be on. Um, so you need to decide what you're going to roll. So I'm definitely going to spend uh, some exhaustion. Okay, so you're going to add to your so, exhaustion? Yep. So the first, the, uh, the summon row, and then I add... No, that doesn't work. Can I? Um, oh, I, I, I need so to increase the exhaustion value first. Is that, that right? That was what you were supposed to do. However, if you want, you could just roll another d6. Just do slash r space 1d6 and we'll count that oh, as okay. exhaustion. Yeah. Because two sixes aren't correct. Yeah, I mean, you don't, well, it does mean exhaustion uh, is, is probably going to dominate here, but go ahead. and. Right, okay, that's, that's a success. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And, and, and so are um, you going to use madness or no? Yeah, I think I'm going to use two madness. Alrighty. We're already in crazy town. You might as well. Exactly. Nope. Two 
six again. Oh. Ooh. Wow. wow. All right. I'm going to I'm going to have to look up something in a moment. Um, mm-hmm. but first I sort of get lost probably. I in... shall roll pain. Okay, I've got one success. Um and uh, we have a tie. Um <laughs> between exhaustion and madness um, in the ordinary way of things um, let's see um, madness beats exhaustion and so I don't think yeah I don't think I'm gonna use my despair to influence that so um, I, which I can basically my despair allows me to change what dominates if, uh, if the numbers are right um, so yes this means that you're gonna you're gonna find uh, you've got how many successes? One, two, three. You got three successes. So you're going to find yeah. some of this information, um, but you must also decide uh, what response you want to check off. You must check off a uh, a fight or flight. In other words, um, you get uh, you're you're using up one of those. <laughs> what does that mean in this sense? Let's say if I use flight to have to run away from here and not do what I wanted to do? Well, you're going to get what you want to do, but you're going to have the urge to uh, to run either literally or metaphorically. Um, so it's uh, you're going to be consumed with terror. Um, right. But mm-hmm. you can still do what you want to do. It doesn't change your... It doesn't mean you necessarily have to change your aim, um, but it will be flavored in that direction. Right, as in I'll be um, right. Okay, we need to we need to do this now. Come, come, come! I know where to go. All right. Yeah, you've got it. You've got the. And, uh, you, and, and I spend uh, I spent a flight. Okay, um, so you've got it, but you're like you know, you, your adrenaline is pumping now as you see exactly yeah. where the where the path is. You can see uh, that. Uh, where the guards are, you can see that they're probably... Uh, you don't get exactly, like, camera feeds in there. Um, but the thing is that District 13 runs in such a haha clockwork fashion that uh, you can predict what they're going to do um, mm-hmm. in, the, in their normal course of things. It's only when you mess with the normal course of things that they get, that they get upset. So, um, seeing when the guard changes are... Kind of helps with that. Um, and so you realize they're going to stop. Uh, they're, they're, they're going to. There's going to be a break in about mm, 20 minutes. What? That, uh, a break of sort. Not, not like they're going and getting coffee, per se. They're robots. But. Um, <laughs> Shift change. Yeah. Yeah. Shift, Shift change, change, change in 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Okay. All right. Let us, let us turn off this the elder and we music. Head, we head towards the um, the opera house. All right. So you are uh, you are diving uh, opera house word, um, and uh, let's uh, let's go with yeah let's go with this one. All right. He says choosing a soundtrack. Um, assuming I can hear it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. All right, he says once again, hoping it's not too loud. Um, he uh, so you you bust out of the uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, the 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 shadow utilities uh, building, and uh, Brent is like. Probably trying. Uh, I don't know. Are you going at a full clip, or are you? Uh, or, <laughs> yeah, I'm at a at a quick pace. Yeah, determined so, quick pace. Yeah, and and, uh, and and looking around frantically for cops. Excellent. <laughs> that shouldn't be disturbing at all. Um, <laughs> and uh, I presume uh, Tyler and Caitlin are following. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so, circle around back into District Thirteen. Um, you are uh, heading as, uh, as Brent is heading very rapidly. It's like so almost he he, he 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 runs ahead. He's looking around nervously as he's running as he's running ahead of uh, almost running ahead of you. 
Um, as you're, uh, and so it's almost uh, not exactly a chore to keep up, but you know you're kind of concerned he's going to be that you're going to be seen. As uh, it's thirteen o'clock, so the streets are now uh, where they were previously bustling. The traffic is mostly gone now. There is uh, <laughs> there's like nobody out here right now. No one wants to be out during thirteen o'clock. Um, and so having now having. Uh, Spotted the patrols, you still need to, or, or knowing kind of, uh, uh, Brent, as you've kind of got in your head, um, sort of where the patrols are, um, there's still going to be a question of uh, getting getting to the Opera House. Um, right. Because they are still out there and uh, dodging them at the appropriate time. So, um, I think I'm going to, uh, yes, we're going to need... We're gonna need more rolling here, um, and uh, since uh, since again Brent is in front, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Brent roll again uh, for for this one. Unless someone else wants to wants to do something else that would involve uh, well, just, well, first of all, let me ask: Does it, what does everyone want to do? <laughs> I'm trying to get to the upper house as quickly right. as possible. Is everyone just following him, or are you doing anything else? Um, I'm going to be. Um, just really thinking heavily about um, how it would be great if, like, the police officers like, let off some sort of glow or something that made them more obvious mm. and uh, attempt to use um, my madness talent. Okay. This, oh, excellent. This is an interesting thing because it's like you're sort of using the nothingness to... Uh, <laughs> to yes. I mean, I feel... Sorry, go ahead. Everything's meaningless, and if nothing is true, then she can make up kind of what she wants for. I kind of feel like that for uh, for a talent like this, it almost would involve um, shaping the spaces between things to an extent. Um, sure. Like the the sort of the the nothingness, but not not the literal space. But you, you mean the perceptual spaces between things. Um, but you can also make those cause the uh, cause the cops to uh, be much more noticeable. Um, to create a greater, a greater feel, uh, a, a greater field in the uh, <laughs> uh, uh, of of that which uh, is in, of the reality around them that makes it so that they're more obvious. Um, so, let's see. These are so you're going to be trying to apply this to pretty much all of the officers out here um, on the street in District 13 at 13 o'clock. So. Yeah. I am going to be rolling six pain dice, just so you're aware. It's because this is going to be a really major effect. Yeah. So what do you want to roll? Um. Now remember, you may add one to your exhaustion before you roll if you wish. That is I'm going to add one to my exhaustion. Okay. I'll get that real fast. Uh, so Tyler would like to help. Okay. Um. There's a there's a thing in programming called rubber duck programming, mm -hmm. where you solve problems by explaining it to an inanimate object, and, and mentally the act of explaining it makes the solution clearer. So Tyler at this point would just like to be the rubber duck. So as as Caitlin Caitlin is muttering these things, he's just you know no clue what she's talking about. Okay, but it's yeah. just sort of nodding. But you're helping and, the yeah that along. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so yeah, you will just roll discipline. If that's, yeah, if and that's, if the that's good uh, and any successes you have will also be added to Caitlin's total. Um, the results of the die roll, whatever dominates, that will be uh, revisited upon the both of you. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. So, and I'll do madness yes. too. And well, let me, well, hang on. I got to figure out how many madness you need to use for this. I didn't say, did I? Uh, you're rolling against six pain. Um, so you're gonna need to do this. I, I think it's gonna be at least four madness dice for this, uh, since you're affecting all the cops. Sure. <laughs> okay. So four at least. You may roll up to six <laughs> if you want. <laughs> okay. Uh... Well, let's we'll try four. Okay. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll just do it this way. Mm. 
Okay. Um, yeah, we can we can we can roll with that. And you got two successes on discipline. Okay. Now, um, I shall roll pain. Let me know also if the uh, if the macro in there is for madness is not working for you, and I'll take a look. Uh, I think I might just need to delete the. Oh, I probably just need to delete the question mark and number of dice. All right. Let me take a look here. So, um, two, three, four uh, successes plus uh, Will's two successes is six successes. And I got three, so that means you're going to succeed. Um, but pain dominates. Uh, which would give me another coin of despair. Uh, I'm actually going, but, hmm. Do I want to just collect the despair now, or do I want to shift what dominates here to cause more fun? Uh, <laughs> let's say that, actually, no, I can't, can I? Because I've got, well, no, I could. I could make, let's see, I could make madness dominate uh, by adding a six to your madness roll. Um, because you've got fives next to that, and I've only got, you've got two fives next to that, I've only got one five next to pain, so we could do that. Um, let's see, or I could bank the despair for use in a moment. No, let's, let's just use it, let's just use it up. Um, because when I use my despair, you also get a coin of hope. Um, that you may use, not right this moment, but in a, in a moment. Um, <clears throat> so, um, madness is going to dominate because I'm adding a six to your madness roll. Um, so this is going to succeed. Uh, so all of the, uh, so you now know pretty much, you're all able to see pretty much where all the cops in District 13 are right now. Now, one result of this is going to be that they're aware something's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, however, uh, I did not make pain dominate, so it's not necessarily going to cost you right now. Um, so that doesn't mean, so it's not a thing where they can necessarily de detect the source of it yet. However, madness is dominating. So this means you must check off a response. You use up a response uh, and uh, either fight or flight. And, sure. um, let me know what it is, and uh... Uh, it'll be. Uh, she's emboldened by being able by that actually working, so she's gonna go with fight. All right, yeah. So it's like this suddenly again. You, you get sort of adrenaline as you do this. You realize it's working. You can see where all of these clockwork bastards are, and the the urge to to freaking pummel the the these people in this horrible system that has put you here is uh, is very strong right now. Um, and so, but yes, you are definitely emboldened by this success. Um, just for reference, so sorry, go ahead. So the same thing applies to me too? Yes, please check off a response. <laughs> so I'm going to check off flight because I'm going to completely misinterpret her murderous rage. <laughs> so I'm going to run down the nearest alleyway, find the biggest dumpster pile of trash that I can find and try to burrow my way into it and hide. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, where are you going? Come back here. <laughs> Tyler races down an alley. <laughs> we need, we need to. <laughs> Incidentally, just so you're aware, you can spend coins of hope to remove one exhaustion or remove a check mark from fight or flight. Or add one to a discipline pool if after you roll. In other words, add a success. Uh, add a, to a discipline pool after you roll. So those are those are all things you can do with hope. Um, and that's anyone can spend that at any time that they're they, they want to do that. Um, so yeah, Tyler has raced to a dumpster, dived into it, um, and uh, so you, 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 you see him do that. Down. Come back here, come. <laughs> And uh, uh, Brent runs over and uh, tries to uh, grabs him, and, like, looks at him, and goes, "Come with me." And I use my madness to land. 
Ah, yes. Uh, you have a madness talent to convince people to do things for you. Um, oh, wow. In a supernatural fashion. Um, <laughs> Uh, which, which, you know, basically it's, 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 it's Dracula time here, basically. Uh, <laughs> so, um, let's see. So this will be, um, let's see. So yeah, this is still something I, I'm, I'm going to be rolling pain against. Um, right. so let me see. Tyler seems particularly, uh, disturbed by this whole thing and what this place is doing to everyone. Um, it seems much safer here, here amongst the trash. Um, so I, I think this will probably be at least, th I want to say it'll be at least three pain. Does that sound okay. fair, Will? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think so. so. I'm going to be rolling three pain against this. And so you must tell me what you will be rolling. Right, so I'm rolling my discipline. I'm sp no, I'm not going to spend exhaustion because I've already, I'm already at three, but I will be rolling two madness dice. Okay. So the okay. discipline, no. Yeah. So it's a light suggestion at two madness dice. Yeah. So just to be clear, um, right. you don't want to necessarily force Tyler to do it, but you want yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to... Make Get sure him it out very, of his. Give him an I want to hide to thing. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, two should do that. I would think. Exhaustion. It's one success, and then oh, and two sixes. Ouch. Mm, yeah, and one success for a success for the uh, madness. Yes. Okay. Another six. Let me roll some pain. I got one success and one uh, one six. Um, so let's see. D -d -d -d. Exhaustion is dominating. So um, you're going to succeed um, as you're as you're telling Tyler this. But just having run de run after him and everything that's been happening and having to just keep this up in your head and just where everything is. Uh, combined with you know your own frustration with it, you just realize that you are very tired, um, and uh, exhaustion dominates. So um, you increase your exhaustion by one mm -hmm. at this point, even if you did so to uh, before the roll. Um, so you increase the exhaustion again. Okay. And what does that put you at? Five. Okay. Uh -oh. Yeah, you're getting real you're tired. Dead. You're getting real tired. You've been on your feet for so long, and it's like oh, come, come, we have not that much rough. time. Let's go. <laughs> so, so Tyler feels a little better, but he's sort of yeah. peeking around uh, Brent to to try to spot Caitlin, <laughs> uh, trying to figure out who she has uh, poured all of her nihilism into. Uh, some helpless victim on the street. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is Caitlin doing right now? Um, she uh, she followed Brent and let him take the lead because he seemed to have. She just let him take the lead, and uh, but she's now more confident, kind of like watching the street, like she's seen the the heroines do in the TV show and movies, just kind of like taking some sort of stance uh, that to people that don't know fighting probably looks pretty legit but anybody that does yeah know she's imitating something <laughs> so, so tyler is calmer but terrified you look like the most badass ninja fighter that he has ever seen please 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 don't don't hurt me who do, you, who do you see? Who's gonna hurt you? We got him. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for saying that. Please. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. Are we gonna go get Todd? So uh, yeah. So so Tyler will crawl out of the dumpster and and toss away the the carton of whatever you know on Earth might have been Chinese food in in the Mad City. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, well. It's the same shape box. That's uh, exactly. That's what I assume is the same takeout box. It's yeah. just something very, very different. <laughs> All right. So as you sort of 
clamber out. Uh, are you folks continuing on to try to get Todd? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to say uh, you make it to... Now the, the police are very well lit and very obvious. It's very obvious where they are, where they're going to be. There are beacons. There are alarms now, however, going off in the city because they know something is happening. Um, <laughs> you uh, make it over to uh, the opera house. Um, and in the... Uh, as far as the... This, the tunnel goes. Um, you know that um, it's that there's an entrance from the basement of the opera house that goes into the sewers because, of course, there is. Um, <laughs> that's that's how it's been opera in every single adaptation. Like that. <laughs> that's how it's been in every single adaptation of the Phantom of the Opera. So, damn it, that's how it is here in the Mad City. <laughs> Uh, so that is, uh, so are you going in the front? Are you trying to find a back door? What are you doing? Uh, yeah, like the stage door. All right. Um, so you're, uh, sort of, sort of, a, you, you go around the back, you find a stage door, which is not too difficult to find. Um, no, they do not have handles mental. on the outside, however. So what, uh, what are you doing? What's outside? Sorry. They do not have handles on the outside. Oh, however. right. Okay. So, um, what do you want to do? How sturdy does it look? Uh, well, it's... We'll say that this opera house is a little bit older in terms of just what period of it comes from. Uh, so, I would say that it's... Uh, it's probably made of... It's probably made of wood. Hmm. Does it open to the outside or the inside? I believe it usually it would open uh, yeah these types of stage doors I think are supposed to open out I'm trying to thinking back and remembering um, so that's that's typically how that would go however this I think this is old enough it probably opens in so yeah this this looks like it'll open in <sighs> quick look and try a boot it in all right um, let's, uh, I'm going to do, uh, this is going to be up against pain of two. Okay. Um, I'm not going to spend, uh, exhaustion on this, right. obviously. So two successes on discipline and three on exhaustion. Yeah, you want to roll madness or no? <laughs> up to you. <laughs> Nope. No, no, okay. <laughs> right now you're exhausted, dominates. All right. Um, so two six. Uh, I got two successes. You got five successes. So clearly, um, you are uh, you, you 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 do this successfully. You haul back. You boot it in. But boy, are you tired now? Because <laughs> exhaustion's dominated. Your exhaustion goes up one. I think that brings you up to six. Does it not? It does. But doesn't the Success mean I. The success means go down you, you, you open the door. <laughs> oh, wait, okay. Success means you open the door. You can also use, uh, if, if you want to claim that uh, token of hope, you can use it to, uh, to reduce. I, I will do that exactly. if nobody minds. No, because you're, you're out otherwise, so yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, so I stay where I am. Okay. You're still at five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, it's once you, you only crash once you go past six. Right, okay. Yeah, but yeah, obviously you're not at the uh, final stage yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, it open, yeah, door opens up. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's a, uh, in, into, it looks like it opens up into a backstage area. Um, there's uh, sort of uh, brick walls um, and a lot of uh, cubby holes with uh, costume pieces and props in them. <laughs> Uh, where you are right now, a lot of there's several trunks. Uh, you see, um, looks like an entrance to a costuming area, and then an entrance to uh, the, uh, another way to go backstage. Yes, yeah, I follow my mental map of the uh, 
entrance to the secret tunnel is. So past the, you think the direction is the costuming area and there mm -hmm. should be a stairwell going down. This, this way. Let's go. Should we stop in here real fast and point you to the costume room and, and maybe we can find something just real quick to make us look more like... Ooh, that's a good idea. Other people? Good idea. Right. All right. You're hunting for disguise? Make, it, make us look a bit more local. Or if there is a cop uniform... That would be also perhaps helpful. So, um, I believe Caitlin is taking the lead on this. Yep. Um, so, let's see. Finding a cop uniform specifically... Finding three cop uniforms is probably going to be the most difficult thing. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna roll three pain dice uh, for this. Um, so it's up to Caitlin to decide. And you, you two can also help if you wish. But of course there are consequences. <laughs> um, so if we help, do we find costumes for everybody? Or is it going to be three different roles? Um, it's going to be... Well, it's... You two would do discipline rolls only and add to uh, her successes. Um, mm -hmm. If if she succeeds, there will be costumes for everyone, one way or another. But it's a question of what she finds. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be fine with something sort of innocuous, black, um, but obviously now yeah, maybe with, with a couple of shiny buttons on it. Uh, <laughs> but if it's an actual uniform, that would be better. I'll definitely try and help find one. Okay, so you're going to be rolling so let's your discipline. Uh, roll Caitlin first, I guess. Sure. I'm not going to lie. I would be okay with like a, a Valkyrie opera costume straight out of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> so I take it you're not helping. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm oh, helping. You're helping? Okay. Yeah. Um, so are you only rolling exhaustion and discipline? Do you want madness on this? No or no? Um, that's all. I'm good with that. I think. Okay. And uh, okay, you, you so. two can then just roll your discipline. It's just going to be. Yep. We're not going to count what dominates from it, but we only we just count your successes. Oh, holy crap! Okay, um, that's quite a bit. Here, let me roll my feeble pain dice and see what happens. Uh, I got two successes. Um, so one, two, nice three, four, three five, ones. six, seven successes total. You find three cop uniforms with uh, mannequin-looking masks that you can wear, mm -hmm. and. Uh, turnkeys that looks like they were doing a production of um, the the Tales of Hoffman. Uh, so they they have uh, pretty much everything you were looking for uh, here. Um, uh, the cop uniforms, um, masks, silver paint if you want it, uh, and uh, turnkeys to put in your backs because the, they have those. Um, <laughs> And uh, the, the, on harnesses that you can wear, uh, so that you know they, they, they won't fall off. Um, so yeah, you can you, you find three <laughs> things that will make you uh, three uniforms that will look, make you look exactly like the clockwork police. Excellent, nice, fantastic. Um, however, let's see what dominates. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Uh, I got a five and a three. Uh, exhaustion, there's a five and a four, and discipline, there's a four. So, um, exhaustion is going to dominate, um, for, for everyone. <laughs> so as you're running through all these costumes, you gotta do it fast. Getting real tired, everyone adds one exhaustion. Jeez. But now you all look the part. Hmm. So, uh, do you proceed on? Yeah, I think so. Just a thought. Now we, that we look apart, can we just march in and tell them to, um, you know, there's a prisoner transfer and we will be taking care of it? Well, if you get there, if you use the tunnel to get there, you'll get there just in time for shift change. It's fair. Uh, and so... However you want to use that, that's up to you. Do we look the part well enough that we would actually fool real cops? Well, you you don't know a lot about them yet, aside from what you have seen in uh, the Shadow Crones dossiers. Uh, but uh, so quite possibly, if you be you think maybe if you behave enough like them, um, they 
probably won't notice if it's because it's everything's regimented and you can use that against them. Now, yeah, of course, if you get inside of one of them that's more aware, like Officer Tak, then you know the jig might be up. But uh, against the against just the cops, you might be okay. Going forward. Yeah. All right. Let's see when we get there. So <laughs> you head down uh, I'm, into the I'm in, looking for the tunnel down the stairs, and this uh, opens up ba basically into a, a sewer area that goes right down. There's a there's a thing you open up to continue down the stairs, and you do down into these uh, very sort of archaic looking sewers, uh, bricks everywhere, that kind of thing. There's a little stream next to you, but there's a walkway. Um, and uh, pipes everywhere. You continue forward. Uh, you, you have a straight shot from there directly to the uh, the satellite precinct, um, and you'll be coming up just uh, around the uh, the side of it. Uh, yeah, actually, you'll be coming up. Oh yeah, no, you found a secret tunnel. Yeah, no, you'll be coming up. Um, <laughs> You'll be coming up in the basement of the precinct. <coughs> and Creek. Okay, so you you time it so that you'll know they won't be down here. You open it, and uh, so right now um, you're in. Uh, looks like this is a uh, there's another stair that there's sort of a ladder that goes up, and uh, these are sort of a metal trap door that you come up. Um, and uh, you're in there. It's a kind of a. Um, it's it's the room where they would keep. There's a boiler in here. It's a boiler room. That's the word I was looking for. Um, <laughs> uh, boiler room pipes. Very hot. And uh, yeah, there's, look for the way up. Yeah, there, there's a door. Um, yeah. So, um, the place that. Todd was sitting looked like an interrogation room mm -hmm. to you. Um, so it's really just a question of finding your way there and avoiding uh, being seen and coming in to... Uh, so I see this is in the back rather than in the, in the public area of yeah. the police station. So, and that, you again, you kind of have everything pretty much mapped out. You didn't really see the insides of the buildings, mm -hmm. but you know enough that you know kind of where to go. Um, coming around the back. Um, as you are... As you are heading through, um, you come out to a hallway that... Uh, That it's this sort of these uh, green, green-faced bricks. Um, and a lot of stuff as well. Uh, <laughs> green-faced bricks, um, and uh, that lead down to what look like are probably the uh, interrogation rooms. There's basically wooden doors. Uh, you, uh, you see, uh, you see a patrol, or no, you see a patrol passing by. And you yep. see stopped a, like in a doorway. You, know, you see a couple of them step out of the interrogation room, and and stand at attention. Outside. Yeah, outside of it. Yes. What are they armed with? Just whooping sticks. Yeah, they they've got uh, billy clubs. Well, here goes nothing. Um, I uh, stalk um, over to them. Um, we've been replacement for uh, interrogation um, of the uh, prisoner. All right. Um, so, uh, 
There, these are uh, two of their minions. It is uh, it is shift change, but you are in District Thirteen, so I'm going to set this at a uh, as a, at a pain of five. Um, that you're going to be able to convince them that you so are. So I'm obviously going, obviously going to use my madness talent for for, for this. Um, certainly. So uh, regular discipline. One. I'm um, obviously not going to spend exhaustion, otherwise I fall asleep. Oh no! Do you want, do you want wow. some So, uh, how many madness dice can I roll? Um, up to six. I guess I'll roll all right six. Now you, well, right now, well, yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna say discipline's dominating right now, but... Yeah. Do, do you want some help on this? Uh, well, if you can look official. <laughs> Look in the part. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's five successes of madness. And uh, uh, Will, you said you're you're helping. Yeah, and I'm just I'm amazed at how low all the dice were on his madness. Yeah. It is amazing. Four ones. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm gonna roll my pain. And I got four successes against your one, two, five, seven, eight, nine, nine successes. Um, so and let me just just checking through. It looks like discipline's dominating. Uh, Excellent. Yep. And I don't have any despair to spend to try to change that. So no, you're. Uh, uh, so what that means when discipline dominates. Uh, is that uh, things stay under control. You have the option to remove a response check mark or decrease your exhaustion by one. I'm going to decrease my disc exhaustion. <laughs> and uh, that, is, that also goes for Tyler as well because, uh, because he helped. Yeah, he'll move a, remove an exhaustion as well. All right. So, um, they... Yeah, shift change command accepted. And they turn, and they they all they walk very uh, very steadily out the door. <laughs> open door. All right, you open the door. Um, you see, uh, you see Todd. Just sort of, he's he's lying. His head is uh, lying on the table right now, but he's he's uh, actually his head's turned away from you, lying on the table. Uh, he's. Uh, He's, he's still his uh, his hands bound up. Um, he 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 looks very much the worse for wear. Is he breathing? He is breathing. Right, Todd, we need to get you out. Yeah, we need to get you out of here. And uh, I look right. around for keys. Um, so you're looking around. Uh, let's see, four keys. Yes. Um. I don't think it's going to be that difficult. You're you're gonna you're gonna find a uh, there there is a ring of keys. Yeah, pin. Um, they they would put it in a very obvious place. Mm -hmm. um, a hook on, on the wall. A yeah, there's a hook. There are some keys. Um, it's far away enough that he wouldn't be able to get at it. Yeah. Um, but he's he's sort of trying to reach far across the desk. Is as he's as he's like. Uh, but well, I, well, yeah. As, as he's trying to get up, he's like, oh, oh, oh my God. Uh, yep. So getting out of the cuffs and then we just bundle him out of here. As you're unlocking the cuffs, he says, "Can I, can I have my glasses?" He says he's pointing at them. They're sitting on a stool that they've they've set away from the desk. <laughs> yeah. S someone pick up his glasses. Uh, Caitlin goes over and picks up his glasses. Okay. So you have his glasses. Um, do you give them to him or do you hold on to them? I uh, give them to him. Okay. So as you are heading out the uh, out the door, um, and you're sort of very regimentally, officially uh, trying to take him out, and he's like, "Oh, thank goodness! You had no idea where they were going. Where, where, where are we headed?" Shh, quiet. This way. Okay. Okay. So, you uh, are you taking him back to the tunnels? Yeah. Okay. You get to the boiler room, and as you are opening up 
the, uh, the, the, the big metal trap door. He puts his glasses back on. And... Uh, who's opening the trap door right now? Uh, I guess I'm holding him so somebody else would need to open the, the trap door. Yeah, I guess Tyler. Okay, so Tyler's doing that. Uh, Brent is sort of holding, sort of, you've got him up. And, uh, Caitlin's, I guess, with them. And, uh, you see, uh, see Todd put on his glasses. Caitlin was probably in the best position to see this happening. Uh, his eyes suddenly go very bloodshot, and you can see him through the glasses. They now, the glasses crackle with yellow energy. <laughs> and he's, and his hair begins to move. Uh, and he God. says, yes, thank you. He stands up straight, and he looks. Uh, he looks back. He, he looks back at there. They're not going to get any of us. And you see his hands begin to crackle with some sort of yellow energy. And immediately, you can hear this loud whine as uh, all as as uh, bolts are are bursting off of the pipes. And you and you see a. Uh, and you see these these needles all turn into the red that uh, are are on this boiler as he's uh, as he's operating to it. <laughs> Jump! Go 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 go! It's not going. None of us. None of us. <laughs> and I'll try to bundle him down the trap door. All right. Uh, so get out of uh, here. Todd is about to become a nightmare. So <laughs> this is. Uh, <laughs> Going to be verse a uh, to to get out of here safely uh, with Todd in tow is going to be versus a pain of seven. Ow! <laughs> so who is who is leading this? Uh, and, uh, I'll grab Caitlin. Will grab him by the collar and. Okay, so Caitlin will be the primary roller on this. And uh, uh, Tyler's gotten the gotten the trap door open as this is happening, uh, but yeah. So Caitlin will be rolling, and uh, uh, Brent, if you wish, you may help. Yep, definitely. <laughs> yep. And uh, so yeah, pain seven is what you're rolling against. Uh, Tyler will help as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You. you just while you're, you're they're holding the door. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah. You can do that. That's yeah. Fine. I mean, while they're trying to get him down the the trap door. I'm gonna, I'm him in the head. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. You have a pipe, so you're trying to stop it. Stop it! <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Okay, so discipline and exhaustion, and uh, that and uh, Tyler, go ahead and roll roll your discipline. Nice. And also, uh, Caitlin, are you using uh, are you using madness at all or no? Um. Uh, why not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How many is it? Um, well, it's it's. Uh, well, you're, are you using your talent? Uh, because that's that. Then I would apply a number, but uh, you can use up to six otherwise. Oh, gotcha. Um, you're rolling. It was seven pain. I'm ro yeah, I'm rolling seven pain. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna say good. I'm gonna not try any madness right. there. So you've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes right now. So yeah, actually, I'm I'm only rolling seven yeah. dice. So D I, statistically, I, we should win this one. Statistically, <laughs> yes. So I only got three successes. Let's see. I got a six, two sixes, sixes on exhaustion. So uh, you managed to essentially. It seems like you've knocked him out. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you cold cock Todd just as the boiler appears to be about to explode. You all get down, pull the hatch behind you, get down into the sewers. You hear this, these, this eruption above you. Alarms are going off. Todd is unconscious and no longer glowing. Um, and exhaustion hits everyone. Everyone ups their exhaustion by one. Is anyone kicked above six? Okay. All right, but you have successfully grabbed Todd, and uh, 
what do you want to do with him? Get back to the to the mistress so she yep. knows we're compliant. All right. That was the whole point. So, hmm. Let's see. Let's go with this one here. I think that'll work. Okay. So, you race through the tunnels, as some of which are kind of collapsing a little bit behind you, as the uh, as part of the uh, very terribly ordered uh, District Thirteen satellite precinct comes slamming down into the sewers below it, <laughs> racing forward down through the tunnels, uh, back up into the opera house, or do you just try to take the tunnels all the way back to the uh, to the square? Ooh, it might actually be easier to go straight to where we need to go. Yeah, I figured we'd stand out on the street if we're dragging yeah. the body. Yeah. All right. Well, well we, we we're still dressed as policemen, so you are still know, dressed as policemen. it wouldn't be too um, unusual. Although we would be moving away from a police station rather than moving towards one. It's fair. But yeah, let's let's go through the tunnels all the way to the clock tower. All right. Um, you're running, you're running uh, through through the tunnels. Uh, there are a couple of points where, as you are doing so, um, uh, you do note that uh, as you're getting further you know, in, into an area just outside of area uh, District 13, that some of the tunnels you're passing by are coated with wax. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you notice... You notice individuals suddenly, uh, like a couple of uh, seeming on seemingly look like sentries, just sort of look up. They're people coated entirely in wax. It looks like um, you know they, they rise to attention and seem to start following you as you are uh, as you are passing picking these up the tunnels, pace. picking up the pace. Um, you're going to try to lose the wax minions. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, the wax minions are not too ru too tough to to lose, I think, but uh, they would be dee -dee 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 -dee. given the numbers that are currently the smothered folk. They are called. Um, mm. I'd say there are about six of them, so this is going to be versus pain two, uh, pain of two. Okay. Um, and who is who's taking the lead on this? Uh, I well, I I actually have uh, for the. Um, Exhaustion talent. Um, I have like a track star sort of mm. thing. So Ooh. I think um, taking the lead. All right, sure. sure. Absolutely. Oh. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> it's a D6. <laughs> That's not very good. Uh, I guess we'll do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Was anyone was anyone helping? Uh, or, uh... Uh, yeah, definitely help. Well, in sort of you now urging people and telling them where to go in that sort of thing in that in that fashion. So I'm try. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, that certainly and, helped. And yeah. Tyler's running along, kind of you know basically body checking anybody that looks like they might. <laughs> Okay, excellent. It, it, it All right, much success versus two pain, uh, two successes of pain. But of course, you've easily outclassed that. Uh, and uh, but exhaustion once again dominates the situation and comes once again down upon everyone who is helping. Um, that at, puts me over six. Okay, so as you are reaching, you, as you come up, just outside of shadow utilities. Uh, everyone's uh, exhaustion goes up and Brent collapses. Uh, Brent crashes. So if you crash, um, you fall asleep. And as it is, it looks like it's only like a couple of minutes, uh, like about a minute to uh, to, to 1 a.m. Or one to one, whenever that is. They don't really have a.m. and p.m. here. 
Um, but you've got, uh, yeah, it looks like it's only like a couple of minutes, a minute or two to one. You're right outside, and Brent falls over. Uh, Tyler will will grab him and kind of fling him into a you know a very awkward fireman carry. Okay, um, you pick him up. You head into the uh, into the utility into Shadow Utilities, or yeah, what you doing? That's where I'm headed, and I'll and I'll grab uh, Todd kind of gently by the arm. And yeah, they're they're both unconscious right now, but uh, oh, okay. Todd for different reasons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As uh, but yeah, the moment Brent falls over, there are a couple of folks distantly across the square who seem that you can almost feel their heads turning in your direction, as though they could sense when Brent fell asleep. Um, and uh, you go inside. You have the uh, you have the table. You I mean, with the table. You have the the desk. You go past the the front office into. The area with the electronics. Yes. And you see the shadow crone sitting there. I'll set Brent down uh, gently on the floor and kind of make sure he's he's comfortable. X. So she stands up, walks forward. And just seems to ignore the fact that you have Todd. She just sort of looks down at Brent, reaches her hand forward, and just seems to sort of almost sort of stroke the air above Brent, doesn't actually touch him. It's been so long, so long. Finally. So. I have one more offer for you. Well done, by the way. Thank you. You hear, um, you hear the clock strike one. And she points a bony finger at the, uh, at the side of the room. And behind an area that looks like it's actually got bars in front of it, that it's like a little sort of caged area, there's, you see a door appear, a plain white door. You may leave right now if you wish, but here is my offer. Leave this one, and you may take her back with you. And you see on the monitor, once again, you see Ayana just sort of sitting up bewildered on the, uh, on the magician's table. Um, looks like says uh, the, you see the magician open the boxes, actually, with his gloved hands and no face. Uh, <laughs> And she sits up and he's like, ta-da! <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> she, she looks kind of scared. Now when she said leave this one, is she pointing to Todd or is she pointing to Brent? She's pointing to Brent. Oh. This is not fair. We did what you asked. You said she could come with us. Well, she is free to find her way out. No, she you said released. she could come with us. Well, if she wishes to come here and, and follow you, of course, but... How can she wish something that she doesn't know is possible? It might be. That said, this one is very valuable to me. She says, uh, again, gesturing to Brent, And let us say I can easily expedite matters and make it so that the clockwork police do not find you ever again. All you need do is leave this one with me. 
will see him again later. Why do you, why do you want him? He he fell asleep. I I'm still awake and go and you should take me instead and let them all go back. <laughs> ah, but it is when the awake enter sleep that is when they are at their ripest. All right, Tyler has had it. So he's getting the runaround with with the bosses at work. They're blaming things on him. They're changing requirements. He just, he, he loses it. So he is going to attack this thing and bop her in the head with his big pipe. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a point of exhaustion and I'm going to max out madness. All right. Um, this he's, is, he's just gone. He's just snapped. This is going to be versus a pain of eight. <laughs> just so you're aware. Sure. Uh, as this is the yes, the, this is a nightmare, a full-fledged nightmare. You're attacking, um, and I uh, could very well be going to sleep after this. It's entirely possible. Does Caitlin wish to help? Um, she's actually sure. going to take the opportunity to grab Brent and try to grab him through the door because Tyler's making a decision and Brent hasn't been able to make one at all. Interesting. Okay, are you leaving? Are you leaving, Todd? Nobody cares about Todd. <laughs> Todd. I'll, I'll try to. Uh, Brent will be my priority, and then I'll try to also grab Todd if there's things still going on. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see how good a distraction is going on right now. Um, well, like, well, let's see. Should we should we roll the distraction or should we roll to get him out first? That's uh, that's an excellent question. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I think actually no. We're just gonna we're just gonna roll. Uh, we're just gonna roll f uh, for this this main conflict, and I think we'll see. Kind of, I, I think you'll be able to get Brent out. Um, so let's. Uh, but let's see how well this conflict goes, as to all whether right, or not so, you have time to grab Todd. So so Tyler rushes forward. Just all of the frustration and rage mm -hmm. of the last several months all coalesce in this one moment. All right. So three, six, seven successes. And I only have two. So you race I forward. I an old lady. And the pipe comes down, uh, shining with rage and frustration and injustice. And she's like, she's not ready for it. She's like, ah, goes through her, and she vanishes. <laughs> However, you see um, Ayana suddenly seems to race forward and can see the monitor that you're watching her on, and she knocks against it. Oh. Can, can you open this? Um, I... If I could, I guess, change what I was going to do, I'll use my badness talent to make that screen monitor a door into this room. All right, that should not be too crazy. Uh, I'd say you need about, th to roll at least, uh, well, roll about three, that'll be a three madness die at least to, to do that. Sure. That is a pretty cool madness talent. And this will be versus a pain of, uh, a pain of two. Um, so uh, madness dominated on that roll. So I was going to check off a ah, yes. fight and just start tearing the place up. Ah, excellent. I'm just, I'm, I'm wailing into everything I can see. I'm trying to avoid my comrades, not trying too hard, but trying. But everything I can hit with that pipe is getting smashed. Awesome. Um, that, and uh, let's see. Caitlin also needs to roll her exhaustion for this, I believe. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, lots of success there. 
And I got none. Yeah, no, easily, handily. Um, you do it, but uh, madness does dominate. Um, so you get another response checked off. Um, what, are you, what are you checking off? Um, it's going to be flight, because now she's... I mean, she wants to get... You do it, Everybody the, it, it but she, suddenly oh. turns into a door, she steps right through. through go through there. Okay. Um, yeah. Is that Todd? <laughs> He'll sign your documents later. <laughs> <laughs> she heads out. <laughs> <laughs> and the two of you uh, head out. Uh, you, you grab both, you grab Brent, you grab uh, Todd, and... Uh, you find yourselves back in the community center, and it's uh, just a little after one o'clock in the afternoon. And thus we have come to the end of this one shot. <laughs> Thank Therapy you very much. Is a lot more complicated than I was thinking it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things kind of turned in several directions there. Um, that was brilliant, thank you. Oh, no problem, no problem. Thank you so much for playing. Um, I'm gonna... Yeah, I think uh, if you would like to provide uh, little codas of uh, what happens to your characters, uh, you may do so. You, do you want to do that, or shall we just go directly to outros? Oh, okay. no, I think a coda would be, would okay. be great. Yeah, okay. definitely. We'll go around real quick. Um, well, starting with Will, uh, what happens ultimately to Tyler? All right, so this experience has kind of tweaked him a little bit, but has also given him a little bit more resolve than he had before. So he's going to march right back uh, to work, and he's going to turn him his notice effective immediately, and he's going to walk away from that job. And as soon as he does, this like weight is lifted from his chest and from his shoulders, and he goes home, and for the first time in months, he just he falls asleep and stays asleep all night, probably 18 hours worth of sleep. Um, and then that's just where the camera kind of fades away on him is, is just this, this, this look of, of peace on his face as he's slumbering. Awesome. And uh, Natalie, what happens to Caitlin? Uh, she's newly confident after this experience and, and found a strength inside herself she didn't know she had. So she's much less troubled and worried. She's got a, an awesome new dissertation if she can figure out how to not have it have her sanity questioned for it um so she's kind of a attacking things with renewed vigor and and um you know um, her she's driven and and uh, as she always was and, and gets kind of back to that well-kempt um kind of perfect appearance straight a's girl and uh turns the corner and goes back with her life kind of in this kind of winds up being um, a memory that she's not sure if was actually a dream or not from all of the the pills and stuff. But. Hard to say. Hard to say. Who knows? Finally, uh, Ozzy, what happens to Brent? When Brent eventually wakes up, which might be a few, uh, a few days, I think he's not done. Mm. He because of you know, his his background, the whole thing, and what happened to his grandmother and so forth. Because now he actually has a concrete idea, or at least a hint of an idea of what's going on. Mm. And he will try and pursue that further. So uh, remind me, what, what was it that was keeping him awake? Um, it was... Uh, the main thing was fear of being taken by a nightmare, <laughs> because that would happen. Oh, almost happened. Yeah, this uh, didn't help it almost happened years before. But his uh, his grandmother uh, sacrificed herself uh, from to prevent that from happening. Oh wow! Yeah. And uh, that, he didn't know that, but he but he they had a. a, a a linked pair of charms and sort of the when the knight tried to take it it took his grandmother instead yeah. yep 
And so this is, and since then he's now been on the pursuit of these things. Ah, delightful. Yes, mm -hmm. they almost got you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for playing, folks. Uh, this time I'm going to go around the opposite way, and I'm going to ask folks to say how you're doing, what you thought of the game, and where people can find you. Um, so opposite way, so I'm going to start with again with Ozzy. Uh, uh, how are you doing? Uh, uh, what do you think yeah, of the game? I'm, I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> it's just uh, almost half past midnight here in the UK, and I'm now supposed to sleep because I need to work in the morning. Good, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really enjoyed it. I, I love the world. I love the whole atmosphere of it. Um, that was brilliant. That was really, really good. Um, I'm Karen, pretty much everywhere, mainly Twitter, a uh, bit of Instagram. Um, I do an occasional sort of classic game stream, but that's only when I really have the time for it. Um, but I do things um, reasonably regularly, like um, upcoming Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, I will be on Unmade Gaming's um, charity stream playing uh, kids on bikes cool and then on the same day uh, that will be probably about 3 30 ish um, because um, GM is doing something else beforehand uh, somewhere between 3 and 3 30 um, on Capricorn Cross's channel where we have the finale of our um, Discworld campaign oh, awesome and uh, really looking forward to that. I'm playing Slate to Troll. <laughs> I watched the first one of those, the the VOD, and it was it was delightful. <laughs> uh, very cool, man. Very cool. Was there anything else, or was, were we... yeah, that's it All for right. the for the time being. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you so much for playing. Um, and uh, my pleasure. Uh, awesome, awesome to have you, Natalie. Uh, same question. Uh, how, how are you doing? Uh, what do you think of the game? And where can folks find you? I'm I'm doing well. This was uh, really fun. Uh, I haven't played a lot of Evil Hat games, but I've liked the ones that I've played, and this one is no no different. It's a fun kind of way to do a horror genre game, I think. Um, yeah, and uh, you can you can find me on Twitter at dark underscore aardvark, um, and I also have dark aardvark RPG, which is kind of the professional branding of, of it all that I'm trying to do and uh, just playing on streams. I have some content that I want to rela release. It's taken longer to get out than I <laughs> than I thought it might. And um, also working on making some dice towers and stuff, some custom oh, cool. stuff like that. So I'm ex building an X-Carve and a 3D carver and trying to dip in my fingers in as many pies as I can and see what's See what's the most delicious, I guess. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Cool. And uh, finally, Will. Same question. How's it going? And uh, where can folks find you? <laughs> uh, doing doing well. Um, I've 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 run this game a couple times. This is the first time I got a chance to play it. So this was uh, this was a real treat. I had a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Um, I don't do the Twitter very much, but that's probably the best place. Um, I'm at Will Dive Down. Uh, the other thing uh, uh, where you might find me is with Google Plus Folding, um, a lot of people have moved over to MeWe.com or Mew.com, I guess, depending on your perspective. Uh, but a lot of people have uh, moved over there from Google Plus, so you might want to check that out and look me up over there. Cool. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, well, and once again, I'm Jim Ryan. Um, I, uh, I heartily enjoy Don't Rest Your Head, and so I thought these were great characters. I, I, I really liked getting into the psychological aspects and uh, seeing how each, uh, each of them had a, a good ability to uh, get things done and seeing the different ways in which they tackled things. I, I really loved that. Um, loved the level of interaction with the nightmares on this one. Uh, this was really cool, and I really enjoyed it. Um, this was delightful. This was a delight to run um, for you folks. So thank you very much for playing. Um, thank you for running. Oh, yeah, thank you. It was great. It was, it was definitely my pleasure to do this. And uh, staying up um, a little bit past my be usual bedtime was worth it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, but no. for... <laughs> But uh, folks can find me, uh, if, they're, if they're looking for me, you can find me at OtherDoc on Twitch and Twitter. 
Uh, my website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my uh, Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I also have a short story available on Amazon for Kindle called Titanic Jocularity. Uh, it's a sort of Munchausen pastiche, and if you like funny stories about Restoration-era nobles flying wooden ships through space, you might want to check it out. Uh, that sounds great. <laughs> it's, I just went bonkers, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, no, just do this. Needed a palate cleanser. There we are. Um, well, sounds like a great um, ball to um, role playing in. Uh, it might. It's. I don't know. It's. It, it's. Uh, I, I like the. I like the aesthetic at the very least. Yeah. It, it's. Mm. Uh, uh, it just sort of went crazy with the planets. But uh, in any case, on Twitch, also every Tuesday evening, I play Urban Shadows over on Off the Table, where I get to be a a doctor who treats supernatural creatures and always seems to be in over his head. Uh, <laughs> Then on this channel, on Friday afternoons and Saturday mornings, I play computer games. I'm starting a new game on Friday. I haven't decided which one yet, uh, so we'll see what happens. And, of course, on Saturday mornings, I'm still working my way through We Happy Few and having a blast with it. Uh, cool. As for RPGs, we're still figuring out the timing for Cold Ruins of Last Life right now. It's looking like we may just end up picking it back up at the end of uh, the beginning. Sorry. Yeah, forever ago, forever away. Uh, we, we'll probably end, end up picking it back up at the beginning of November. Uh, but next Sunday, one week from today, we will be playing this month's final one-shot of Don't Rest Your Head. And I am very much looking forward to it. Um, I think we've got uh, enough folks in uh, chat here that yeah i'm gonna do a uh, probably after we go to the uh, to the ending card i'm gonna probably raid over to uh, uh money cook games where they're running the owl of lycia which uh oh, yeah. is, is very cool uh marcy Vellen, uh, marcy Vellen is a very good gm and uh so i thought uh, that might deserve a little uh, little love we'll, uh, I'll, so i'll be doing that folks may stick around for that if they so desire um, but thank you so much for watching, folks. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you it. for running. It's, it's, uh, th thanks everyone for playing. It's really <laughs> awesome um, that, uh, that uh, when people can do this kind of thing, you know? Um, but, uh, but for now, that's it for me. Take care, folks, and uh, I will see you all of a sudden. <laughs> Bye. Bye.